All right, let's dive in. Long death. Okay, so you're 105 long death. It's been a couple days. We played on Tuesday last. Or not Tuesday. Thursday last. Are you still talking about Hollywood Undead? Is that where we're at? Um... As you know, like when when it talks to when, when, like when we're talking about terrible music, Cold Fire. Terrible music. Bands that I know in my heart are bad, but I still listen to them anyways. Like I listen to Limp Bizkit. I listen to Dope. Okay, I listen to fucking Dope. So you you know whatever makes you happy, listen to them. Because who cares, you know. Hey, you've been watching the stream for a whole year now, Grizzle? Been a little over a year, actually. Also, by, by the way, it uh, the song came out in 2003, but Bitch by Dope still fucking slaps. Okay? The, the, the weird, like, fire truck si sirens and... The random voice in the background screaming, come on, baby, at the start of the song. It's so goddamn fun. Is that why you listen to Weezer? No, Weezer are musical and lyrical geniuses. Don't say anything bad about Weezer. I'll link you a thing. I haven't heard. <laughs> As a Weezer fan, Weezer sucks. Is that what you're going to say? I'm getting these workout video ads on YouTube. I think YouTube's trying to tell me something. Get off your ass, you lazy... Okay, well, Weezer, when they were good, were lyrical and musical geniuses. They, they haven't been great in the last, like, 10 years, but they got old. So did I. Okay. No one can judge you for listening to them? Why would anybody judge you for listening to emo music? Christ. I mean, for me, it can't really beat Beverly Hills because that was like a month of my life, that song, so. Are subpar at best. Um, they fill a niche. I wouldn't say their music is subpar. Okay, no, that that I could understand. I, that makes sense, Doug. I could see that. I I could see that being not not an issue. When explaining to friends. I'm, that, it would make perfect sense as to why you'd have like kind of an allotment of specific kinds of music you'd be allowed to listen to within your friend category. So that makes sense. Talking about new songs? Okay. Yeah, the new songs are. I don't like new either. But Weezer, they, they've written a. All right, we're diving back into Long Death proper. The Long Death, um, we hit 100 years recently, and I did the uh, attempted pig mass murder, although um, it seems like the catapults only hit the pigs like maybe once every 15 to 20 times, but we're just going to kind of leave the pigs in there for a little bit until the miasma stops, and then I'm going to go in there and collect all the bodies. Till then, we're just going to get the dwarves kind of doing whatever. For those of you who don't uh, know what Long Death is, the whole point and goal of this fortress is to keep it alive for a thousand years. We're not at war with anybody, and we don't intend to be. The uh, entire goal is just get alive as long as possible, keep the dwarves as happy as possible, and uh, catapult stones arc over them. They certainly did hit them a couple times, and I, I, I noticed that, or I read a thing about how Catapult stones, like, go up to the top of the Z-level and stay at the top of the Z-level and then come back down. Anyway. Um, yeah, they do actually arc. Supposedly, they can actually hit ceilings. Supposedly. I didn't notice that happening, but... Um, 
Anyway, so the point of this fort is to keep it alive for a thousand years. So it's very much a fort of mundane and longevity. The whole goal of the fort is just simply, as I said, to keep it alive as long as possible. So um, a lot of what we're doing is just a lot of big construction projects and uh, things to uh, keep the dwarves busy. Currently, we have 49 of the dwar dwarves in the fort, and every single one of them is named. I will read out all of the dwarves that are named. Right now, if you would like me to check up on your dwarf, just let me know. Yes, I uh, fire anything out of a minecart. Because instead of like firing it on a strict arc, they all go out at different arcs, and you'll see stuff bouncing off. Uh, so the, the dwarves in the fort are Chimp, Happy, Axon the second, Ara, Gimper the second, Zapdos the second, Gate Nerd, Lump, Mikawel, Selawek, Pablo, Padinsky the second, Vlug, Here's Jamie, Polking, Hot Cup of Tea, Eric Shadowblade, Lord Floof, Rander Buddy, Cryo, Sui, Dragon Man, Wave Thrash, Goats the third, Vinsati the second, uh, Form Shadow, Swoos, Trumpet Dog the second, Focal Fury, Black Hole, Sweet Sparkle Farts, Picture Point Guy, aka Pilot Guy, uh, Sethatos, Sparkly 4K, Spitalier, King, Crash Battery, Voozle Voozle, Nervicious, <coughs> Sliffle, Atsukiya, Trumpet, Aegis, Omnivore, Mad Hijinx, Horny, Apostle the second, Colonel. You always feel dumb? War Fortress is an extreme, exceedingly simple game that a lot of people um, overwhelm themselves with before they fully understand it. It's literally uh, a world simulation with two main modes, adventure and fortress. Fortress, you build a fortress of dwarves. That's all I'm doing. I'm just building a fortress of dwarves. And then adventure, you control one character, it could be any race, and you go around in the world and murder things. No, it's like RimWorld, but actually has depth and mechanics that are interesting instead of just they send in things to kill you block time call it rimworld rimworld more or less just has things that make managing your colonists difficult and piss everybody off and uh will send in uh um things to kill you or fortress is simple or Fortress is a very simple game once you actually know how to play it. It's Learning the game isn't necessarily easy, but um, it's not a hard game. The Warm Shadow, how are you? You are chained up. Um, you are overthrown by the stresses of day-to-day -day living and feels miserable after being confined. And you've been confined for about three or four, or maybe five years now. What's complicated about Dwarf Fortress is the view of it. Um, since we're in the fort, might as well do a overview and I'll explain the visual. So what you're actually looking at, and it might just look like a bunch of garbled and that's fair. What you're actually looking at is you're looking at 2D planes. And each plane is a layer of what is essentially Minecraft block. So right now we're on the surface. That snaky thing throughout the map in the middle is a creek that freezes towards the bottom. Why it goes. The blue section snaking through is a creek. It's suspended over open space, which is the blue. The brown are constructed pathways. In this case, a lot of uh, suspended pathways up in the air. If I go up a few aisles, you can see the tops of the trees over on the left. You can see the hill over here. All that black starry stuff is undug out stone or dirt in this case. As you move up, you can actually see the contours of the map kind of going up towards the top. So if I move up a little bit more, you can see little bits and pieces of how the map kind of fits. And eventually you'll see the trees at the top. The trees are exactly like Minecraft trees. Each one of those little squares making up the tree is a, uh, a three-dimensional block. As we move down towards the actual fortress itself, you can see the walls on the side. We move down a little, oops, a little bit more. Uh, you can see the two constructions I have over on the left, which is my outdoor um, spot for livestock, as well as a, a little bridge along over the river. If I zoom in a little bit on the UX, up in the top right, there is a moon. This little guy up here, which says the size and shape of the moon. We have the number of dwarves that are idling, so dwarves that currently don't have a task. Tasks can be things like socializing. They can be things like storing items in stockpiles or crafting items. On the right as well, along the right, we have a kind of a black circle. If I move up one layer, it's going to say one, the green one. 
there's a little plus above it and it says plus one that means we're one z level above like one layer of blocks above ground level to go down one it's going to say zero if i move the camera into the mountain it might no it doesn't sometimes it, it does on the bigger mountains it'll say it'll change the uh, ground level um or ocean level rep as i move down it now says minus one meaning we are one layer underground or in this case one layer down into the giant hole that i've dug if i go down another layer it'll say that we're two layers underground three layers underground four layers underground five layers underground six layers underground seven eight nine ten eleven twelve hold the down button for a little bit fly down throughout the map at the very bottom is another number that is the total number of z levels all the way down into the negative rep this particular map goes down 167 i think that said z levels and as i go all the way up back up into the sky we can go up 25. if something is supported it won't collapse it's not affected by structural integrity although hopefully one day they will be as far as things that you're seeing running around all of these brown zeros are tree trunks in vanilla if i wasn't using a tile set they would look like this It would look like that. Um, livestock and animals are represented with individual characters. In this case, my unicorns are U's. I have a horse over here that's a H. If I jump down to the actual dwarves themselves on the main Z level, we have tables, we have walls, we have doors, we have statues. We have little uh, water grates with misted water coming down through them. We have windows, we have musical instruments, we have dwarves. Uh, the, the status effects that they have uh, affect the pattern that they are blinking. So this dwarf is uh, basically uh, exhausted and tired and wants to go to sleep because of the down yellow arrow. Uh, this dwarf can't walk, so they're, they kind of got that flashing red indicating they have an injury and a brown background indicating that they are lying down. Um, there uh, are other motions that they can have like flashing down red arrows, which means they're stressed. Flashing down blue arrows means they need water. And Spitalier just gave birth to a boy. But that's kind of like a brief overview of the visuals. Um, Feb. Oh, child. The son of Spitalier and Cryo. Congratulations. Did I just switch between tile sets? Yes, you can do that. So if if you have a tile set set up as um, as full screen, and a tile set up tile set set up as uh, windowed mode, because I play in windowed mode, by this is what my tile set looks like. Well, if I swap DF to full screen, if I switch DF to full screen. It'll swap these tile sets because I don't have a tile set set for full screen. I only have one set windowed mode. Which I don't think you can do with Lazy Noob Peg. Yeah, so I just, I, I literally just hit F11 and it swaps to Vinyl. On the fly. <laughs> um, but uh, Spitalier. So what I'm going to do, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100. If you do not currently have a dwarf in this fort and would like to fort, we'll, we'll name you in as this baby, which will surely grow up in the future. Well, not not by just using the launcher. So I think we're getting a Kibbs the second because the number I was thinking of was 69 because I'm mature. Kibbs too. He is the son of Spitalier and Cryo it's true. He is an ardent worshiper of the fuchsia and a worshiper of shit and rock. Your home, well, congrats. Jim is associated with Julie's health and takes the form of female. A male dwarf? A male dwarf. And, uh, Yusha takes the form of a male dwarf and is associated with...
Yeah, I know, but... I, I think you're missing the point of what I'm saying. Watch. You can't set it to have two tile sets set up within the launcher. You still have to open up the I and I function. That's all I'm saying. Um, it killed your second fort yesterday. Ah, uh, get good. <laughs> um, give dwarves what they want. Micromanager dwarves pay very close attention to your dwarves. Give them big bedrooms. Give them nice things. Give them good food. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying is there's no button for it in the launch. That's why it confuses most people because they don't realize that it's possible. Uh, don't go into the... Although, to be fair, um, I did it by accident. So... And then stumbled on it and realized what I'd done afterwards. His sideburns are clean shaven and his long mustache is neatly combed. His very long beard is arranged in the doublest of fades and his medium length hair is neatly combed. His cobalt eyes have large and his nose is eyelashes and his His hair is a crew, and his skin is sandy tough. Yes. Generally, the f fault of the own pl of the player themselves, right, as your dongers, but um, it could be anything, really. Boredom, frame rate, um, uh, monsters. Uh, I had a fort fall to fire once, because, long story short, I set the fort, the forest on fire, and, um, it, it, lots of things. He is bashful and does not find most jokes humor. The detail in his own work and doesn't cling, does in his own is a tendency towards forming deep emotional bonds with others. Compassion, sometimes too. Uh, sometimes without, he can sometimes act without deliberation, and often, occasionally, and he needs alcohol to get. Yeah, I mean, generally, that's why Fortress's fall is just, like, poor management from the player, and big event happens, and then Fortress... Or, and then, man, the player just kind of throws their hands up and goes, fuck it, and lets the monster kill. I, that's probably how the majority. Probably how the vast majority die. So currently, what are we working on? We're working on rock crafts, uh, a bunch of meals, although the rock crafts are literally almost done. Hauling a lot of boulders. I don't know if I traded with you. I think I did. I think I did. Chimp has become a child, meaning Chimp can go about doing Chimp's own things. Chimp, ha congratulations. You have actually become a sentient creature. You're going to go get some clothing. I wonder what clothing Chimp is going to And before, it's all crap. All of it is crap. Very important choice. Also, are you going to grab a million pieces of jewelry? You're headed to bed, cutest. We'll see you when we see you. I'm assuming for tomorrow. You grabbed a rope reed tunic, shitty gloves, some a shitty sock, two shitty socks, a shoe, app, another shoe, and some trousers. All kind of shitty. I felt pleasure after putting on an exceptional item, though. I felt love after gaining a sibling, but was annoyed. Feel anything? a boar die, didn't feel anything after seeing a so die, didn't feel anything after seeing a so die, didn't feel anything after seeing a boar die, didn't feel anything after seeing a so die. Yeah. Good. I'm lazy, Ozzy. I, to me, that's less chaotic than using uh, the infinite stockpiles. Those are just kind of my, 
I put junk here that needs to be traded away stockpiles, so they're just a mess because they're like ev the everything else stockpiles. I have well. But mostly I'm just. And I don't like using. Um... You always over organized. I don't see dwarves being particularly organized. Like the, the way I envision dwarves is just like massive stockpiles of things. Like my, my organized ones are over here in these hill, in these buildings. And, uh, like. Oh, there's that, which is bars and stuff, and then this one, which is all jam. This one, which is all coins and all that stuff. Like, I do have organized ones. Like, all my food ones are very organized. And there's this other coins one down here. And I, I find um, quantum stockpiles to be incredibly difficult to manage the few times I've done them, because... I have a really difficult time remembering what's where. Having to constantly check what's in which stockpile is pain in the ass. Like down here, I have a soap stockpile. Packed with soap. So, you know, it's, it's whatever works easier for you. For me personally, it's easiest just to have big old stockpiles of everything. Like that's all seeds. I got a few more seed stockpiles elsewhere. That's all food up there. That's all empty food containers. That's all blocks. There, there's some iron ore in there because they haven't yet. This is all clothing and armor. This is also weapons and armor. I, I do have organized ones. I don't really care about making hyper-organized stockpiles. But yeah, this one, this one, this one, and this one are all the... Stuff to get rid of stuff that's right below the trading depot, and that's... Although, I kind of wanted to build some more trading depots today. I'm getting tired of only having the one. Yeah, the only reason I've really moved stuff down here is for ease of trading, so that I don't need them to run over here and then run over there. It just fills up the trading depot way faster. And especially when you're trading with, what, six different sieves? Four. It's nice to be able to get your shit trading deep before they leave. Yeah, exactly. So that that's why all this stuff's down here. Like, the one on the left is mostly just finished goods, and those are all kind of temporary, hopefully. And then clothing goes down here because I'll occasionally sell all of my clothing and uh, or lower quality clothing goes down here. And then aside from that, it's just all crafts. Like this is all just amulets, crowns, scepters, rings, earrings, uh, amulets, figurines, all that shit. Please. Although I, technically toys aren't supposed to be down there. I think that's just the key down there and leave. Well, stream will be here when you're done studying your Dutch. So study your Dutch. Don't let my stream distract you from your work, yeah? Too late for what? Studying Dutch? Because I don't think so. I, I don't like it when people tell me that I'm keeping them away from home. So because the dwarves just uh, finished kind of a big milestone, we just reached 100 years in game. I'm basically going to give them a year off. Oh, interrupting your work. But I think that there's a difference between procrastinating a uh, job and not studying. Like if you're doing something on a deadline, okay, if you're doing something on a deadline that has to be done and it requires studying and you have a test coming up, you should be doing that and not watching my stream and I will actively stream if I can. Um, now that being said, if you're at a job that you've worked at for a long time and you're just procrastinating a slow day, 
fucking more power to you. I get it. Do it. Do what you need to do, and uh, keep yourself entertained. But it does kind of irk me a little bit. Oh, you know, well, I'm here and uh, watching your not studying when I should be. That upsets. Me. Now you have to be responsible. Man. I mean, you can absolutely be lazy, but. Focus on shit that's actually important. Because as much as I want to say that my stream is the most important thing in the world, which is why you should subscribe to twitch.tv slash blindirl, uh, support me on Patreon, and throw lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of money at me, um, before you do all of those things, make sure that all your shit's in it. We're so slow. You just played DF all day? I, um... Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever played a video game. Well, I don't think I've ever... I've never played Dwarf Fortress at work. I have, however, played Smash Brothers at work. I used to bring my Wii U into work and we'd play uh, Smash Brothers. Very good times. So it looks like you're working. I mean, if you work in like a, a any kind of tech related job, oh, you were a receptionist. Yeah, I mean, any okay, rather not not tech job. You work a job where you're at a desk. That makes perfect. You work any kind of job where you're at a desk and there's people around you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Especially, like, if working as a receptionist because then, like, you're paid to, you know, do your reception work, get that stuff done, get it done right, and then um, after that just do whatever, right? Get them all. I mean, another game that you could probably get away with playing at work would be Aurora 4X, right? Because you could just like... Oh, this is really cool. We're at 50 dwarves. You know why that's cool? And Titans and Mega Beasts. All my uh, age trap. I've had a mayor for a year, although my mayor wants me to make two ants. No, we, we've had mayors for like 70 years now. Always had mayors. Plopping some more cage traps in. Also, um, cage traps along. Airs happen at fifty. Think so. Like, that sounds right. The only job I've ever missed... Dad, what's a job that you've had that you missed? Because the only job that I've ever had that I've missed, now that I don't have it anymore, is the job that I had where I literally just got paid to drive a speedboat around. <laughs> that was a fun job. You low-key miss Amazon? Why is that? You get discounts at Amazon or something, or did you just work with good people? You liked the people. Yeah, I know that. I, I'm, I'm not the kind of person to be friends with the people I work with. Like, it's actually been weird in the past, like, 
two years, I guess, through Twitch because I now have a stream team, right? And I'm friends with my stream team. It's kind of the first time in my life I've actively been friends with people. Like, I have certainly had people that I didn't mind being around that I worked with in the past. But I, I never would have really thought of myself as somebody who actually liked the... You worked in a kitchen for one day? Okay, why did you work in a kitchen for one day? How do you have that job? That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Is your dongers? You don't miss the job, but you miss the... What do you do now? Yeah, <laughs> didn't have money for the meal, so they're just like, get in the kitchen, bitch! Oh, man. Cool guys, fun work outdoors. So, like, you fix heavy machinery, I assume? Close the work. Yo, Bastion. How is you? Isn't that the goal? Dongers? One of the workers was off sick and he was like, want something to do today? Okay, that's kind of awesome, actually. Just show up. Did I'm assuming like they paid you cash then, right? Just like show up and work the shift. That seems like a downgrade. No offense, Shadow. That's that's kind of great, Bamber. Like show up and grate cheese and wash dishes all day. You did six loads of laundry? Hold on. Why do you have that much clothing? Holy shit, six loads of laundry? Insane. <laughs> you just hurt my brain, Ray's. Thank you. I mean, a lot of blankets. Holy shit. Like for for me, it's two loads of laundry, clothing, and bedding. That's it. My towels go in with my bedding. When I lived with my ex, it was sometimes three. Or I'd just do them more frequently. And she had like four times the clothing that I have. That's kind of awesome. Those large excavators are kind of neat. Coal industry is a nightmare, but you know. Oh, fair enough. So you guys have a lot of blank. How to fix dwarves' mental health? Just make them train military for you. Go do what you gotta do, Riz. Speaking up, I guess. Yeah, and as somebody who is a cleaning services worker, it's it's boring, mundane work, but it's oddly satisfying. At least it, it was for me when I worked in that industry. Like, it can certainly be stressful, sure, but... And it can sometimes be unnecessarily pressured. More often than not, it's just oddly relaxing job. 
I just have a llama over there? What? No, I do not. So that's a dead llama. <laughs> that's okay. They'll find a dead llama in there eventually. I think we finally moved all the boulders. Nope, not all the boulders. Still a few left in the mix. I'll pull that lever and we're gonna get all of these pig corpses um, dumped. And not that though. It's one millimeter off balance. Oh, really? Kind of suck. So they're going to come and deal with all of those piggy corpses. The royal treasurer has arrived. Excellent. Welcome, humans, and the royal treasure. And the humans have arrived for trading, which means it's time for us to fly down here. Cut off all the military squads from training. Go over here. Do this. Go to crafts. Hit enter. <laughs> Uh, let them all go bring crafts up. They all split and dash. And this is why all the stuff's down here in this chaotic mess is very easily just like run. Amazing how uh, X's can do that, right? You're new. I bet on behalf of the Merchant's Guild, let me extend my greetings to your people. There is much to discuss. The world is the same as ever. What requests do you have of our merchants? All of the wood. Please. Thank you. Humans. Also, uh, humans, if you could bring me some of uh, some of um, those, you know, them nice uh, turkey uh, 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 hands. Lovely. There they are. Turkey hands. Need turkey hens for uh, eggs. Uh, well then, we have finalized the import agreement. Feel free to go over the dock. And uh, let's discuss what we're willing to offer you for craft storeship. We have finalized the export agreement. Again, on behalf of the Merchant's Guild, I bid you farewell to you. Amazing how many people have, like, dream jobs that they'll never be able to do because of either... Undiagnosed disabilities or mental health. How you're supposed to level a washing machine in a tiny millimeter thing. There, I realized the other day that my dryer has a big old crack in the back of it. <laughs> like, not going to say anything. It still works, just... But it certainly has a big old crack in the back of it. Weasel is fighting. Weasel's front leg takes the full force of the impact. Weasel, did you fall out of a tree? I think the weasel was just going too fast and fell out of a tree. <laughs> Fighting gravity, right? So something I was doing last night is I was actually putting in a an effort to properly learn uh, adventure mode. I did three different adventurers. I don't know. I think uh, the late night streams would be a good time slash format to do some adventures from now and again. Goats, the mayor has been reelected. Welcome back to our glorious mayor, Goats the Third. Pity, Goats for the Wind hasn't come by the stream in a minute. I like to tell Goats that their dwarf is a uh, mayor, but.
What happens when you put dwarf into a maze? Uh, dwarf pathfinding in a maze is great. Like they they don't they they know their way out and they're good. Dwarf pathfinding gets bad when you have a lot of dwarves trying to get through a small space and they have to like lie down and stuff to get over each other. So if you have one dwarf in a maze, that's fine. If you have ten dwarves in a maze running dr straight towards each other in a tight hallway and half of them have to lie down, and they have to like jump over each other and stuff. That's where pathfinding. Is. But dwarf in a maze, no. Idea. They know exactly where the boulder is, and they can just go get it. Like, this right now is causing me a little bit of frame rate lag, because they're all trying to get up two tiny spells, or most. Which is a little frame, but it's fine. Now, if I had, like, 200 dwarves trying to do this, I might have a bit more trouble trying to path over each other. Get up and down. Request my broker come to trade. Flipple. Everybody assumes that mazes would break it, but in reality, it's actually like the opposite. Mazes are fine. It, the main cause of frame rate issues is when dwarves have to like climb over, each other, which is why this central staircase isn't just two by two. It's one, two, three by one, two, three, right? Um, because if there's two two dwarves trying to go up the same one, one of them can just vault up here, and there's only one option for where they can go, and it's the best option. Um, so instead of like them trying to do weird, unnecessary amounts of math to kind of path around each other, they just like dive over top of each other. Also, that's a lot of pigs. <laughs> Got a lot of pigs. I let all the pigs out of the basement. They're all just kind of randomly moving about right now. Oh, get put away. Also need to dump all this. All right, into the garbage. Have all of your dwarves stuck in tree? I don't know why intentionally frame rate deathing your fort would be an achievement. For <laughs> I don't really consider that an achievement. Or really see why that would be an even remotely interesting achievement. I do think the majority of the achievements should be seen. Following the wrong. Been requested at depot. Go trade, please. No? You're not going to go do your job? You're going to go socialize? You're about to get fired. You realize that, right? Look, he's getting the last ones. Sounds like an awful achievement. I hope they don't add it to the... now gone to eat. Okay. Can you, uh... Eat your fish. How can you go trade? Yeah, that's it. You're getting fired. I need a new broker. Goats, the mayor. You can be my broker now.
Yo, you got better priorities. Yeah, no, I don't really agree with achievements that uh, break games. I've certainly seen them in some games in the past. It's it's kind of funny. Um, I was watch I watched the document a documentary about the development, the outer world, the outer wilds, not the outer world, outer wilds puzzle game, and uh, there was one line in it where they were talking about. There's this one thing that you unlock where you have multiple cameras, and they were saying that if you leave one camera on one planet, fly to a different planet, leave your ship there, and then fly, and then go to another planet, and then have, like, three viewports, it'll, like, frame rate wreck the game if you can tell. Um, and they originally had that as an achievement, but their publisher made them remove it because they're like, we shouldn't have an achievement that literally just breaks the game. In Hard Space Shipbreaker the other day? Why is that great? Lassoed half the ship. I mean, Hard Space Shipbreaker just made me um, unpleasantly ill in about 20 minutes. I, I don't understand how human beings play that game. Being perfectly honest, I have no idea how people... Yeah, crow. I have a pet crow. A duck. I'll buy a duck. Doesn't want a duck. I want a duck. Isn't that great? Hard space wasn't? Yeah, I don't know. I just. I came. No, I agree. I mean, I do certainly think, think that, like, Having a dwarf die to gravity would be a good achievement. Your game just froze. You go too close to a big settlement. Cause that'll do it. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. I was playing adventure mode relatively recently on Walked too close to a large settlement. Yep, frame rate just went bye bye. Yellow mind, how was you? Frame rate is currently one. Hey, if you've got one frame per second, you're doing it. Right. You could be doing a lot worse than one frame per second. Listening to Pogo to get your mood up. And like listen to Pogo in a very long time. Alright, I need to use the toilet real quick, chat. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna let you guys follow Sethato. We'll be back moment.
I'm, I'm happy that Pogo is still out doing what Pogo does and actually has the rights to do what Pogo does. I feel like there's so many artists like Pogo that just like got sued into oblivion and can no longer do what they do. Usually flimsy and happy. Go for coding and gets your mood up. Yeah, that's why I listen to lo-fi. Just kind of repairs my mood. Like they're finally noticing all of the dead boars. This isn't hurting you. No, it's fine. You know, they just don't feel it. Is the next cut stream? I know I don't plan. Usually, like Sundays or Thursdays. As depends on when I feel like it. If I if I hold things too strictly to a schedule, I go nuts. When I need a day off from Long Death or Dwarfs, I'll play something else. And if I feel like playing Cut, I'll play Cut. Although I will say this, I'm pretty goddamn salty after my last. I've had enough very bullshit deaths in my recent Cut runs. <laughs> Certainly leaning more towards the uh, more coffee break. I don't like worrying about losing a 30 hour run. Fun though. Yeah, but me with a destroyed mood equals bad stream. So, why, why does that matter if cut's on sale? I mean, people should go buy cut if they haven't bought cut, but it goes on sale, like... You just bought it like five days ago. It's only 10%. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't really plan particular games to stream far ahead. If I did, I would go insane. Really need to kind of just keep things on the, I play it when I feel like playing it schedule. That works best for me. You're asking what's hard for dwarf pathing. These kinds of hallways are bad. Because if I have like more than two dwarves trying to path through that hallway at once, things are going to get... Do I have a feature wish list? Don't kill me with things off screen. Um, not really. I think um, I could probably come up with like... In Python, why Python? Why Python? Um, although a roguelike where you play as a Python would be pretty. You could call it Python RL. It's like Python RL written in Python, featuring a Python. You play as a Python. You are a Python. It's actually like just a turn-based snake demake. You, you, you touch things and you get longer, but it's like turn-based. I don't know. I think that would be a funky gimmick if you if you had a Python Python where you play. Make our RL the new roguelike? No. It would be Python RL, the Python roguelike. <laughs> Otherwise, it would ruin the joke. Come on. Get with the program. We have one pun. We have to milk this for all it's worth. But like... 
Could you code a roguelike? Um, I've wanted somebody to make a good horror roguelike for a while. Like a game with a really good scary atmosphere. Like basically, I, I want a game with like the atmosphere levels of something like Darkwood, but turn-based and permadeath. I've wanted a good like I think science fiction roguelike's the wrong term because I I roguelike. I want like a futuristic cyberpunk kind of roguelike, but where it's more like in an like more of an open world setting, where like you go around a cyberpunk city. Heck, actually, a Blade Runner themed roguelike where you play as a Blade Runner. So it's more about like going around and like trying to deduct where the person is that you need to kill and then actually fighting them versus like so so many roguelikes i think lean very heavily on like the traditional dungeon delving i think games that kind of subvert that and take the idea of roguelikes and then remove the oh it's just another rogue clone and do something else with the with the with the genre i think those games which is why I think games like um, CDDA, in theory, are really cool. Or something like Caves of Cut, even. Something that kind of takes the genre and then does something weird. So you still have, like, all of the traditional trappings of the genre that make the genre cool, but at the same time, do something weird with it. Like, I had a pitch a while ago, which um, would be a game that, in my head, I would call Kill the King. And the whole point of the game is you're in a throne room, a randomly generated throne room with randomly generated um, layout to the castle. You're, you're in the castle and you are a random person in the castle. Maybe there's like different jobs you could have in the castle. You could be like the jester or the uh, the ring, like the, the crown holder or the executioner or something. And the whole goal is to murder the king. You have to assassinate the king. And it's a matter of figuring out where the king sleeps in the castle. Uh what time, who goes where, and like it, it would just randomize a schedule and basically give you a Hitman game. But the whole point of the game is to find, locate, and kill the king. Basically roguelike Hitman, yeah. I, I, essentially roguelike Hitman. But I don't know why I, 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 I feel like killing the king would be a fun... Yeah, medieval Hitman. Maybe. And I, I think that that would be a really interesting take on the genre. Like, there, there's... And this is one of the reasons why I think Aliens RL is actually a way more underrated game than it should be, because it's a game about running away from and hiding from the alien. It's not a game about um, necessarily fighting the alien. It's a game about running away from and hiding from the alien. You have a good night's sleep, animal. Work hard at your schoolwork. Get shit done. Hanging out. What? There's a pig stuck in the in the wall, so we have to cut it down. Which is why whenever I see a game that does something weird with roguelikes or something kind of different with roguelikes, I get excited. But when I see a game that's like, oh, it's just doing the exact same things that 15 other games do, it's like, well... It's All right, um, I need, I need ballista parts for, let's just say 10 ballistas, because we're going to use ballistas. So this is going to go forward being my, be my training range, and we're going to make other, uh, uh, what's the word? Catapult slash ballista range. But this one's just our current training range. I kind of want to make large suspended ones, suspended above the map. That do some. It's exciting sitting at fifty dwarves. As land beasts fight in hill titans and fighting possibility. From 
the comfort of your mountain home? Uh, I mean, ask Tarn. Don't ask. Wouldn't that just be a tack nuke? Something that people have been asking. Poor Jackie. Jackie's been passed away for a while, and we're still destroying the masterworks of Jackie. Humans appear to have come by and are free. In the year one, the Council of Tiring of the Confederacy of Sport founded Yellow Steel. They're telling us the history of their faction. Orbs are still at war. Still invading them gubbins. I mean, it's been a meme in Dwarf Fortress forever, is when will Dwarf Fortress add tactical nukes? Which is why it was so fucking funny listening to the DF Talk episode. And towards the end, uh, when they had, uh, I think it was Jason from Caves of Cud, and they were like, so uh, I have a question about Caves of Cud, but this might be spoilery. And he goes, okay. He goes, do you have tactical nukes? He goes, we don't have tactical nukes, but we do have handy nukes. ever not been uh year one through ten they weren't <laughs> but year 10 through 105 they have been so you know just normal dwarf thing Do you have a population cap? Yes, I do. I do indeed. Population cap is 50. First 10 years, first 10 plus years. Well, I mean, it's it's doors versus goblins. Unfortunately, I, I don't have a goblin emote. Unfortunately. Maybe one day we'll have goblin emote. They need a lot more uh, subscribers to have goblin emote. So, Stone, it's time for paperwork. The annual tribute from Bastide Pime and the annual tribute from Nilon Abo have both. The two human factions, well, the two human uh, towns that gladly bring us tribute every single year. Is that a goblin? Eek. Looks kind of goblin-y. That is def- that brain slug is definitely- a uh, a large blob composed of vomit. It has sharp teeth and it undulates rhythmically. Beware its deadly spittle. I'd buy it that for a dollar. See what the uh All right, well the Council of Men brought us a reindeer. A cowbone scepter. Fuck. Leaves. Two rope reed mitten. Still berries and one lead bar. That's like getting coal in your stock. They haven't actually brought us a lump of coal yet. I kind of want them to bring me a lump. Akchi? Akchi? Camp bag. 
Un walnut wood training sword, two copper cages, 20 rope reed Stone's got his work cut out for him on that one. That's the Council of Men. And then the group of Soaring of the year 105 brought us one guinea fowl, parchment sheet, and a bill and bar. Once again, how many of them? One billion bars. No, one billion bar. They always make your job hard. Yeah, they're they're just here like putting everything. One billion bar. No, it's one billion bar. For those of you who don't know. Apparently it's a basketball player. Um Villain, alloy. Villain, <clears throat> uh, villain uh, uh, is an alloy of precious metal, commonly, most commonly silver, but also gold, with a majority base metal uh, content such as copper. It is used to uh, chief, 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 chief for making coins. It's used chiefly for making coins, metals, and token coins. Uh, the word comes from the French bill, which means log. I didn't know that. The use of billin coins dates from ancient Greece, continued through the Middle Ages during the 6th and 5th century BCE. Some cities in Lesbos used coins made from 6% copper in both ancient times and the Middle Ages. The linear mixtures were adopted with less than 2% content. Billin coins are perhaps the best known for the Roman Empire, where progressive and... Okay, no, we're not here strictly to learn. We're here. Thank you, humans, for your generous donation. Of <laughs> one billion steel bars, though? I mean, what if I told you that these little walkways down here are paved with iron? Because I have too much iron. Speaking of which, I should do some more of those. Bring a little road down here. Like more central roads. Would be a steel? No, it would be a... <clears throat> it would uh, be a steel. Now just for the councilmen. Storing paperwork's easy. It's the council of men stuff that gets... Are you winning, son? Hi, right, cooler. Speaking of, I'm gonna do more iron. That meme made a lot more sense when I saw the context. Are you winning, son? It's like the current years. How do you do, fellow kids? You have iron. What the fuck? Much. I still have so much. I just. Oh, also, um, for those of you who may or may not happen to have Twitter accounts, y'all might be able to uh, enter to win. Worms key. I don't. I don't know when exactly, but we may or may not have worms. Way on my. They may or may not have sent us keys for literally every single worms game, in multiples. We may or may not have a lot of them. I will link things. What am I up to? I uh, just paving the roads with iron. How are you doing? <laughs> <gasps> I have too much money in Dwarf Fort. Okay. 
Well, rather, I have too much iron. But how's cheers, Jamie? Uh, I can check up on your dwarf if you. And listening to Noida music because Noida has a fucking great. It just lots of uni work. I get that. Doing school from home or I, I've, I've been like really curious about how people are doing school these days. It does get a little hard to parse which dwarf is which. There you are. Here's Jamie, the militia commander. You don't feel anything when seeing a dead animal's dead bodies anymore. Which is good. You're lonely after being away from family. Mood. Uh, you feel fondness after making a friend. And you were contemptuous after getting into an argument. And you were near a table and you think that that is pleasurable. Uh, your dwarf is... 87 years old after being born in your... You still have... I want to say yes. I want to say yes. I read out all the names at the start, and I forgot who is alive. Here you are. You're a weaver. Leave it to weaver. Uh, you feel self-pity after being away from family for two. Well, go stand next to them. Oh, never mind. You have none. That's why. Um, you're 57 years old, born in the year 48. You were one of the immigrants, so thus you don't have any forts. And fam's, fam's in the forts. Locked down. Hold on. Um, at the very least, you are locked down. Locked down. They say it's a hamlet? Yeah, it must be, like, a freaking fortress. That, or they are literally giving me their entire life savings. Like, they, they, they ended up in the wrong tax bracket stone, so instead of sending us normal tax, which is, like, three or four items, they're sending us, like, 157 items every time. That, that might have just been what happened. Is they're just in the wrong tax bracket. But yeah, no, we're just paving stuff with iron because I got a lot of iron. Speaking of iron, how much iron do I actually have smelt? I know that I could smelt way more. Uh, 1,338. Gotta get rid of... Instead of that, I'm gonna just do... do iron statue. Let's just say... Statue's free. Mob lost or destroyed? I disagree with that, but okay. Oh, I know what I did. I forbidden and unforbid stuff in the menu, so fair enough. What I did. Your exploration of dimple honey? I mean you can do that. I do actually wonder how many people downloaded this save file for this fortress because the Reddit thread that I posted of this fortress got like 170 upvotes or something, which in the comments just had a link to download this fort. So I wonder how many people have downloaded. A few people commented about uh, getting, being like, man, this is a very large fort. I do actually wonder how many people have at the very least take screenshots though what dimple honey looks like Watch all this stuff just get masked.
they go. Sure why I'm still getting those job canceled. They all canceled. They okay. No notification. I don't know, chat. Have has anybody here downloaded this aside from? If you want this uh, save file, I can give you a link for it. It is the 105 year, which is where we started from today, is publicly available. There's a Google Doc link. If you'd like to uh, try your hand at managing long death, you can do that. If you want to see what this fort would run like with you know, 250 dwarves in it too, you could do it. Try and expand it and mess around with it and have fun. Or, you know, just abandon it immediately and run around in adventure mode. Thank you very much to everybody who's tuned in. We got a hundred people watching Dwarf Fortress. No, that's... that's If you happen to have a Twitter account, Tonka the Bison, you're here for deer? I mean, what about the uh, reindeer that I just put in there that I forgot I had until about two seconds ago? I also have a duck I need to put into a pen. Up here. I thought that I had two turkeys. The fuck happened to my turkeys? Yes, I don't. All right. Well, the duck can go in there. Um, and the hum and the dwarves have arrived in time to trade. But um, chat room right there. Uh, that that is a tweet. You click on that tweet. Uh, there is information in that tweet on how you can win some worms games. Potentially. We have keys for Ultimate Mayhem, Armageddon, and Reloaded that we're giving away. How did I like F1, the most recent race? It was very slippery. Very wet. Painting. Lots of cars did um, fancy tricks where they spun in circles. Fortunately, they did lots of fancy tricks where they spun in circles, and it was very graceful, and nobody crashed into each other while they were spinning. So it was great. Lots of spinny cars, and nobody died. The optimal outcome. <laughs> um, I am your liaison from the mountain home. Let's discuss your situation. There is much to share. We've updated your maps on the current happenings in the world. Quests. Have a moment. Uh, please bring all of the wood. I'm going to request probably turkeys and ducks and... Mailbox. That would be ridiculous. Um, request some turkey hens and turkey gobs. Eh, why not? Let's re request some geese and anders. 
those of you breaks and sucks. We have finalized the import agreement. Feel free to go over the document. Let's discuss what we were willing to offer you for your craft store. As always, goats, look forward to our meeting next year. Together. And I can't export socks. Good to know. Is it bad that you feel guilty while playing on your fort while not streaming now? You've literally only done two streams and it's getting to you for some reason? Then you should take a break. Um, something that always worries me, and this is kind of my big problem with the affiliate program on Twitch, is Twitch is very good at pressuring you into streaming, especially if it's just a hobby. Like, and that's what it should be for anybody who's, you know, trying out stream onesies, is it should, it should be a hobby and you should keep... Streaming is the greatest hobby you'll ever have. But it's very, very easy to turn it into a job when it doesn't need to be. Um, so what I would recommend is if you want to try streaming as a hobby, keep it as a hobby and don't feel bad. Don't ask for money so that you especially don't feel bad. And the biggest problem with the affiliate program is people start asking for money to stream. And because they're getting paid, they feel they owe people something. You don't owe people anything. If you want to turn your stream on and entertain people for a couple hours, turn your stream on and entertain some people. Have some fun. Do what's enjoyable to you. That's what I did for the first two years, basically. Um, in many ways, streaming is significantly more fun for me now as it's a profession. But on the flip side, in some ways, it's also a lot more exhausting because it is my profession. And especially if you're a hobbyist just starting out and you just want to play around, just enjoy it. And if it's getting to you, take a break. Keep it as a hobby. Think of it as a hobby. It's something that you do for fun for you. Don't worry about doing it for anybody else. Stream for yourself, first and foremost. Definitely stream and enjoy it. Um, but uh, don't feel bad about playing games and not. Tatanka knows what I'm talking about because Tatanka was a streamer is now on permanent hiatus question mark speaking of tatanka have you spoke with don barand recently kind of vanished off the face of the earth from my point of view and i just want to make sure he as the last few times he spoke in chat he seemed I hope i hope he's doing all well. and i know that you and uh Barand were good friends at the very least he seemed like it Stuff set. Go do the job. But how have you been holding up in the uh, fun that is 2020, Tatanka? Dwarves want brought much wood for us. Like a month go ago in a Discord DM? Well, it's more recently than I've seen him. Wizard. Advice for a subscription, I guess. Thank you very much for gifting a sub to Narkoski. But, um, honestly, you're just trying to grow a small community and make friends and get better. I wouldn't think of it as trying to grow a small community because the moment you say, I'm trying to grow a small community and make friends, then you are thinking about it in the form of community management and you'll make it into yourself. The way I would think about it as it I want to build a small following of friends, right? A lot of people think of it as I want to build a community. Don't worry about building a community unless you're trying to do it. The only, because then you'll feel bad if people. The thing that you should do is just say, I want to talk to some other people while playing video games. And that's what I did for the first two years when I, was I turned my stream on and I think to myself, I'm going to talk to some people while playing single player games. That was the only difference, really, was I could either play games, which is fun and entertaining to me, or I could play games and maybe talk to people. 
And I would talk to myself anyway. So I might as well babble out loud. Because I, I, I always mumble to myself under my breath, even when I'm not streaming. I, I always mumble to myself. And I've done that most of my life. Like, back in, like, 2006, when I was playing Age of Empires on an outdated PC. I was mumbling to myself and, like, narrating shit. I just, I've always done that. So, for me, it was very much a, I'm going to play video games and talk to my friend Bryce. Because that's what I would do. I would literally text my friend Bryce and be like, yo, nerd, get in my chat so I can talk to somebody. And he'd pop in and occasionally other people would talk and then he'd shut up and leave because he'd be like, eh, there's two other people here. Greg's fine and he's just babbling at people. Just enjoy the process of streaming and enjoy the process of talking to people. And I will say this, it will definitely help your public speaking ability. <laughs> so it is kind of educational in that. I think he's just nearing the edge of his education, so it's probably so that's pretty. I I, j I hope so, because like he was incredibly active in here for a little bit, and then pandemic happened, and he's kind of just disappeared. I just I just hope he's okay. Like I'm totally fine if people stop, go away, and go do other things. Like more power to you. If you want to go talk to other people and hang out, that's never watch my stream again, that's okay. But if you were an incredibly regular person for a while, I'm gonna kind of occasionally wonder, what happened to you? Welcome back, Outlaw. What'd you miss? Uh, well, there, I don't Baby? Um, graded? Uh, we've got some news that I need to check. I'm importing, uh, geese, turkeys, and ducks, and, uh, trying to get that kind of industry up and running. And, uh, that's pretty much it. Just on some trading. We got our uh, our annual tributes from the humans. Yeah, it's 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 very much a you know the mundane things have happened because they brought a bull, they bought a cat and a ram and a goose. <gasps> uh, what else have you brought? They brought us a guinea cock. Excellent. Um, they brought us a yak, turkey. Basically, trying to get a poultry in. You're going to explore Dimple Honey. Post screenshots, please. Or a video. Either or. No, screw it. Let's buy two alpacas, because they've got a male and female alpaca. And chuck them up with the... Um, you can start shearing them. I said they brought any good... They have lobsters? But I guess long story short is, if you have the internet connection and the means and the desire, stream. Because streaming is a lot. Just don't make it into a job for yourself, because for the majority of people, like, and the thing that I always tell people is, I started streaming in 2013. I started streaming incredibly actively in 2014. And it didn't become something that was even remotely viable as a source of income until about 2014. It was just kind of something I did and made a little bit of money doing for about two years. So think about how many years I did that. And then also realize that I did it four to five, six hours a day, uh, seven days a week for the first. Not like it, I wasn't super active. Very active. All right, so because we just traded for some livestock, jump up here. We're just gonna put the two alpacas up here. They're gonna live with my horse, reindeer, and unicorn. Those ballistic parts. And then over here in this little pen, with my duck, I'm gonna put in not the ring. Cow. Cow go up. Like, you know, I, 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 my, my cousin started streaming this. And my cousin's, he, he's a good dude. But he's very analytical and he's very competitive. 
and he didn't really take my advice on not signing up for affiliate and signed up for affiliate very quick and I think got a, quite a bit of support in like the first and I already see him talking about like man this stream is uh, slow or this stream isn't getting the views that I want and so I see him talking and mentioning about how like seeming kind of down while he's streaming because he doesn't have as many people watching and you know he, he has like five watching him play factory or like five six people watching him play no man's sky more or less by himself which is pretty impressive for some for white dudes streaming pretty commonly streamed video games after about six months pretty good honestly like there's can't really complain much about it. But I think a, a lot of people, they they see the really successful people and the relatively successful people. They don't realize how, no, you're not the only one. Tatanka. Um, might get rid of this pop filter, because this pop filter. I blame the pop filter. I'm so fucking tired of it. <laughs> I, I like this pop filter. It does increase the audio quality a little bit, but the problem with this mic is this mic is, it's a directional mic, right? Like I have to talk right into that for you to actually hear me. And this pushes me about that far away from the microphone because of how thick it is. So it does remove some pops, but. It makes it harder for me to actually talk into the microphone directly. so fucking tired of hearing that i'll be honest tatanka it's like once or twice a day and it's always a person who's convinced that it's only them and then like everybody else is like i thought it was just me it's like no I, if you hear it everybody fucking hears it i hear it too i hear it in my headphones trust me it's not just you i wish it was just you all right but yeah no this will help because i'm now closer to the mic and talking directly into it it's just I like this microphone a lot. It's a really nice microphone. I really, really, really like this mic. But. My nephew? I never said my nephew. I said my cousin. Cousin and nephews are two very different things. You know, he's been an affiliate since like months two. I think he hit like 70. I told him to wait until he's built up a steady community that'll support him. And then apply for affiliate. And he said, okay. And then applied it like, I think, 70 followers because his community just like kind of pestered him into it. Last I checked, I think he had like three subscribers, me being one of them. And it's kind of like, well. what you're going to get, and then you're just going to get demoralized because you're going to think nobody wants to support you, right? Kind of sucks. I, I honestly wish it was harder to get affiliate. Not because I don't want people to have affiliate, but because if it was harder to get affiliate, then people would have a bigger community by the time they got affiliate and would have a higher survival rate after getting affiliate. But three average viewers and stream, what, 20 hours in a month and 50 followers... I, I I realize people get excited about milestones, but that's fucking nothing. <laughs> like that's it's absolutely fucking lutely nothing. Like I like the the affiliate program launched at the perfect time for me because I'd been streaming already for four years and had an active community that already supported me heavily enough that I could do it as a part time job. Right, the affiliate program launched and I. I think I got 60 subscribers in the first day and I've never dropped below 70. And yeah, there was a few months where I was below 100, but I pretty quickly broke 100 and never gone back. Depends on the category? No, certainly. But a three viewer average is not going to be enough for it to be worth signing an exclusivity contract to Twitch. <laughs> Which is what it is. It's an exclusivity contract to Twitch. And 
don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. And like, I, I know a guy who named Formal Blizzard who couldn't apply for affiliate as quickly um, because of some uh, unemployment paperwork that was kind of barring him from signing the contract, which is a good thing that he didn't. And um, so because of that, he had to wait like an extra four months, right? Well, in that extra four months, he became kind of a household name as a Dwarf Fortress streamer. And we all kind of know him now, and he's gained quite a bit of support from the Dwarf Fortress community, the cool dude from Alaska. And because of that, he has a little dedicated community now. So, you know, the, the day he signed the affiliate contract, he got 10k bits from somebody, a bunch of random cheers, like 30 gifted subs. Like, dude did pretty good for a first day, and he's going to get a payout in his first month. It's like, it's worth waiting the extra time build up the audience before you sign that contract if you want to try and do it as a part-time gig so that there's actually a little bit of, of excitement and interest behind it. Sorry about just ranting about Twitch shit, chat, but this is a very passionate subject for me in case you didn't notice. We need strawberry seeds. Blasphemy. Guess I just need to uh, brew some fruit. Into twinks. And I'm going to put statues next to every door. Oh, geez. I've got a whole bunch of lead statues. Thought I placed all of those. I guess I didn't. Uh, 10 minutes and 49 seconds until that's up again. Not up, trumpet dog. Not up for another 9 minutes and 52 seconds. Also, once again, if you would like to uh, win a key for one of many Worms games, there's how. Oh no, that's not good. What? Wh why is that? Did you did you have a um a loyalty cascade? I like Jin. I miss Jin. Things are going very rough. Sounds like a possible loyalty cascade or tantrum spiral. One of the two. You're back from your expedition. How is your expedition?
Sorry, I just I'm doing something. Your fort's cats are being ripped into pieces. Send help. <laughs> Sounds like you uh, are going out with a bang in your fortress. And you know what? That's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes going out with a bang can be kind of fun. Just watching everything go out in a bloodbath can be oddly satisfying. Like, I've had forts that have gone kind of frustrating, and it's just been like a yes when, like, big scary monster shows up and rips everybody into tiny little pieces. It was fun. Good shit. Yeah, some, sometimes going out with a bang can just be great. It's like, oh god, there's teeth! Oh god, there's stuff! Oh god, whose is that? Whose arm is that? The best way to have a fort go. McQueen and the Violet Flag? It says Graven, hello. My favorite uh, gin that I've ever had is by... Uh, a local, well, I guess kind of local, brewery slash distillery called Phillips Brewing and Distillers and Soda Works. Uh, Phillips Brewers, Distillers, and Soda Works. It's a long name. Um, and they, uh, due to the merchants, oh, really? I'm not surprised. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, they, they, they make a very, very, very nice gin. Me? I'm in the greater Vancouver area of British Columbia, Canada, is where I'm from out long. Greater Vancouver area of British Columbia. Only 10? So I, I once had a loyalty cascade, Ozzy. We went from 96 dwarves down to about 6 in about 30 seconds. So 10 dwarves in 10 minutes, that's, that's pretty good. You could do better. Frankly, you could do way better than that. <laughs> you could do so much better. Um, I had a, uh, a recent loyalty cascade where we went from about 50 down to about 10. Um, yeah, it's pretty great. Which was caused by a ghost possessing... Uh, I mean, tell your military to murder one of your own tantruming dwarves and that'll probably do it. That, that, how to kill every, make all your dwarves kill every dwarf in your fort. Tell your military to execute somebody who's tantruming. That will do it. Also, by the way, is the microphone still cutting out now that I don't have the pop filter on? Is it still flying? Because God damn it. I swear to Christ. <laughs> From about 120 to 12. Ooh. Like, I like that pop filter. It's a nice pop filter, but fuck. I feel like I need a better amplifier for this mic. Haven't noticed a drop yet? Good shit. I think it's worth having the pops occasionally for, um... The more consistent microphone sounds. It's like my, my chin's literally on this mic now. It's, like, sitting on the microphone. What originally started this? Just like real life... I mean, have you tried to like look into what hap what caused World War One before? Because it's about as convoluted as a dwarven fortress going hamsters. I stayed away from eighty to forty in five minutes. Dwarf poet, a guest who was also killing people in their rooms. Oh really? Behind the guards who were trying to defend the entrance of the fort. Nice. <laughs> I love it when um uh, so the other a while ago I started a fortress and it was like this big old mountain fort, right? And there was a, um, the first visitor we had was a, the, the, the first visitor we had was a 
Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, a poet? A, uh, a, an, a, an, a dwarf poet who shows up, walks into the what was soon to be our tavern. It was more just kind of like a room, I guess, with nothing in it and a lot of boulders on the ground. Walks into the soon to be tavern, tells a story, and then immediately tantrums and kills my expedition leader. <laughs> So, like, <laughs> visitors can be fun. They're going to blame ghosts. Eh, I mean, you could do that. That was an eventful fortress because it was the first and only time I've seen a dragon in Dwarf Fort. down to 34 from 68 now. Hey, the bright side, Ozzy, is once it all calms down, either you'll have one insane dwarf just like rocking back and forth on the floor going, I killed everybody! Or you will have um, like 15 really, really, really mentally rock solid dwarves. It's kind of one of the two. Frame rate's bad because... Uh, Kias are trying to path into my fort to kill my shit. Fortunately, those bloody traps up there are working. Yes. What's well, the nice thing to come back to after you've been AFK? Is, oh hey! I have ad-free viewing now! But thank you. For lurking so you can... So she wear wait, hold on a second. So the fact that they claim not to trade is rather weird, and their lady wears many clothes, it's ridiculous. So that the person in charge of Dimplahani wears two loincloths, a sheeple and pig leather. I wonder if it's like one forwards and one backwards. Uh one rope reed dress, an alpaca wool wait, how'd you know that okay, hold on hold on a second. I've always wondered this. If they're wearing a dress and a loincloth, how do you know that they're wearing two loincloths under a dress in Dwarf Fortress? How do you figure that out? Asking for science. I, I need to know. We'll see you later, Ozzy. Thanks for gifting a sub. Um... Two rope braid dresses, an alpaca wool robe, a turkey leather coat, a cape, a leather cap. Two leather gloves, one goose leather gloves, one right mitten. I mean, considering it's a protection racket, maybe they just don't want to admit that they are uh, paying tributes to the dwarves. Also, I think in that alternate universe, um, when you retire a long death, it might change the trading thing. That caps it. Very powerful eyes. Better skills with eyes than me. That's not everything. So is it a big extravagant looking place or is it just kind of like another standard small human town?
normal pile of buildings and a seat of power away from the cluster of buildings, but the houses have about seven to ten people and an animal each. Ooh, they're big families. Badinsky. Badinsky. <laughs> okay. Read this. Badinsky says, this is my fight too. This might require an answer. The craft store scratches the key on the lower body, tearing the muscle and bruising the guts. Craftstore bashes the key on the lower body with her silver warhammer, and the injured part explodes into gore. An artery has been opened by the attack, and the force pulls the left knee, and the part splits into gore. A ligament has been torn, and the craft dwarfs charges the elite wrestler, collides with the elite wrestler, they bump into each other in combat, and the craft dwarf is knocked over. The craft dwarf bashes the Kia in the head with her silver warhammer, and the injured part explodes into gore. An artery has been opened by the attack, and the craft dwarf stands up and says, I talked with my lover. I feel such love. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Dwarf Fortress. Never change. Also, who's your lover, Pidinsky? Who's Pidinsky hanging out with? Curious. Romantically involved with Selowick. Well, would you look at that? Who's currently meditating on Valor? Was angry after getting into an argument, but felt love remembering a new romance. Be gone, fear, says Pedinsky. And there's a lot of blood down in the bottom left of the screen. Uh, probably because Akia got splattered there a minute ago. We are very effective at murdering Kias, let me tell you. Well, welcome back, Warm Shadow. What's blah? What are we blahing about? I have too many fucking pigs in this. Too many goddamn pigs. I can't eat them all fast. So, Tatanka, what have you been playing recently? Just curious. And is there ever a chance that we'll get another Tatanka stream in the far future? Or are you just done done forever? Shit's complicated? Yeah, everybody's shit's complicated. I was going to make a poop joke, but then I decided that I'm above that. Loborin, hello. Aloha. I don't get told aloha very often. I get a lot of hellos and hoo hoo and sup and what's shaken and sup mang, but I don't generally get alohas. I don't generally get alohas. Howdy. Yeah, I see howdies and stop y'all from my, uh, Aloha means hello and goodbye. I, too, have seen Lilo and Stitch, Von Roller. So maybe Lilo is leaving. How about that? Also, since when did I get upgraded to captain? I've always kind of thought of myself as, like, a, um, kind of barely a, uh, Definitely not a captain. I'll say. Means Claude? What does Claude mean? That's my more important question for this. Also, Chad, I'm going to be linking this periodically throughout today. Uh, if you go into that tweet, follow my follow that. Oh, no, no. Not, not that tweet. This tweet. Quote tweet. You can still get it there. That tweet. And follow that Twitter account. And, uh... 
retweet and like that tweet, you'll be entered in a chance to win one of a like a bajillion worms keys. We have so many keys for worms, it's ridiculous. You you, you want a chance to win worms? You you can win keys for worms. There's too many of them. We we need to get rid of them. Also, uh, I will not be streaming tomorrow. Tomorrow I will be taking off because I'm going to be streaming most of tonight uh, on Team 17's Twitch channel. There will be information on Discord about it when it goes live and whatnot. So it should be fun. It'd be a good time. Because Worms is always fun. I, I haven't been able to play Worms in a very long time, so... Play Worms? <laughs> kind of, like, way too excited to sit down and play Worms again for the first time in... God knows how long. I, I, I'm actually... I was trying to figure out, like, what was the last Worms game I played. Why are you cave adapted? Why are you, Black? Ejected after being in a, 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 able to acquire something. Jeez. Apparently a lump of earth, a clod. Okay, okay, I could see that. Yeah, that makes sense. A stupid person. I'm going to start calling people clods, because that's great. And a coarse cut of meat. The lower neck of an ox. Huh. That sounds like, like a term for, like, body fat or something. You already own every Worms game? I mean, you could enter to give it to a friend, but yeah. You get that. Convo IRL. How dare you not just immediately inter interrupt every single conversation thing you have going on in real life to uh, speak with me when you've been addressed in my broadcasts? I am offended to talk now. Uh, probably will stream in the future, but basically, like, the five streams per year. Fair. Currently don't have the peace of mind and income to like to invest time into it. Fair enough. Came from the word clot. I know the word clot. That's something. I you think that that was an '80s thing? I feel like um. When it comes to, like, cartoons, they try and pull odd words that are kind of dead to make characters seem unique. Notice that a lot. And some Rocket League always sort of come back together when they, to play when they release the, when they play them once the release. What, you mean Rocket League or WoW? Snowing! Love the snow. Really interesting to see the pathing of the military dwarves. They do odd shit. Sort of anvils is prohibited, that's fair. You'd almost think people like insulting people. Insults are fun, though. They always roll off the tongue very well, and they're very satisfying to say, you know? Your typing hands are skipping words that you think of in your mind. I do that a lot. IKEA stole a spear! Killed the entire population of them. And it left the map with it. I mean, yeah, every language has a lot of insults. The, 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 the history of insults, I think, is funnier. Like, when I learned the, like, origin of the word scumbag, I I felt a little disgusted and also now call people scumbags more often. <laughs> yeah, I, I do indeed have caged guests. I have two. Um, uh, Bim Gemmergigen, the Etten, and Ismer Doslakas. The Etten. They live in my maze, down in the basement, in cages. Um, they don't need to eat or drink, so it's fine. 
Yeah, they're cozy down there. And every now and again, we uh, go down there and release them so they can fight other things in the cages. One of them is missing a bunch of fingers. The other one is missing a bunch of toes because the Cyclops I made them fight down there bit them off. Um, they did, however, beat the ever-living shit out of the Cy Cy Cyclops until the Cyclops was dead. It's funny because in Dwarf Fortress, when a big, evil, scary monster shows up, they don't call it an enemy or an invader or something. They call it an uninvited guest. <laughs> so, like, Forgotten Beast, uninvited guest. Uh, Land Titan, uninvited guest. Uh, epic creature from ancient history that is about to murder all of you motherfuckers. Uninvited guest. Like an arena? Uh, I mean, very snaky, windy, confusing, fucky arena, but yeah, it's still, an, it's still kind of an arena, which I'm going to be adding on to down here. Why do I have a labyrinth? Why don't you have a labyrinth? It's the better question. Only cool kids have labyrinths. Literally because I'm going to be in this fortress for a thousand years to actually answer your question. Eh. Does the enemy AI know the fastest route? They seem to kind of wander a little bit, but pretty quickly pass towards the enemy. Because, like, their sense of smell is real good, so they can just, like, follow the smell. David Bowie was pretty cool. Yeah, D David Bowie is pretty cool. Looks like the brick maze from RCT. You know, now that you mentioned it. <laughs> kind of, yeah. A little bit more blood, though. Than RCT. Only a little bit. Keyword there is a little bit. Yo, Fog, hopefully we'll be able to announce the thing that you worked on pretty soon. It got back to me this morning, so ho hopefully something done by the end of the day. Fog was, was was doing some super secret work for us in the background. Uh, thing, super secret thing happenings. I think it's time to add more onto the maze. Because we're talking about it and might as well. Fog is a uh, British supervillain in real life. He's always plotting something. But generally, unlike um, American supervillains where uh, they actually like cause death and destruction in the world, he just like makes some kid in uh, Gary's Mod kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> Which ruins their RP sessions. <laughs> but then I get a laugh out of it, so everybody wins. <laughs> that is your legacy, yes. Bad kids in Gmod and uh, spaceships at Elite Dangerous falling out of orbit. Fog uh, makes a, a YouTube series called I Need Hard Drive Space or made one for a while, which was he would just take random clips that he would clip in uh, using the N NVIDIA GeForce recording shit of him and his friends. And it then evolved into another series called uh, Mischief where they just basically like overly elaborately troll people. And it's very fun. I especially like the Star Wars RP one. That that was a, a particularly entertaining heist. <laughs> With Among Us stuff soon? Oh, excellent. I'm sure that'll be classic. Yeah, if you ever see Fog post a video in the self-promote section of my Discord, just watch it because it'll be very funny. Some quality content, I'll put I'll put it that way.
Also, I hope work has been less manic. Fuck. Making an area that looks different than anything else I've made in this before. Because why not? It'll be good to redefine success, gotcha. Well, uh, as long as boss is aware of shit being bonkers. Everybody knows how jobs can get sometimes. It'll look interesting for a little bit. So I haven't had a single dwarf starve to death yet in the uh, maze while working on it. So I take that to mean that I need to make the maze a lot bigger. That's how we'll know that uh, the maze is big enough, is when a dwarf starves to death while working. Long live DF. Long live Blind ERL. I love how even she screws up my name. I read that and I was like, oh no, she's gonna hit the thing. Thank you very much, Turbo Tubby, for that Twitch Prime subscription for seven months total. Cheers. Welcome back. How you been, Turbo? It's been a minute. Good. Hope the year hasn't been too utterly trash to you. Hope it's been like tolerable levels of trash. <laughs> We're just expanding our maze. Uh, since 2018? Kind of a bit. But consistently started February 2019. But I've been streaming for seven years as of a few days ago. Total. Is bonkers. I'm old, is what I'm trying to say. It's okay. All of this grinding of Dwarf Fortress will pay off as soon as the Steam version comes out. Eh? <laughs> Although it's already kind of paid off. I don't have to stream RimWorld all the time anymore, which is nice. And uh, we're doing just fine. That, that, that part's pretty cool. I only occasionally lose sleep over w worrying about waking up the next day to um, my all my subscribers being gone and stuff like that. Only occasionally instead of constantly. Doing my best, Neg. But cheers from Canada. There go the dwarves. Good thing they're fast at mining. Just get all of this stuff from here. Mass dump everything. This. All of this. I kind of was thinking about just putting all the pigs into a cage and then just smashing the cage. Might not be a bad idea, actually.
all the bits and pieces of the piggies getting thrown out. Because as you can tell, there's a lot of pink in here. Pink is the stench of rotting flesh. Trying to get rid of it. But my dwarves don't just swim in the stench of rotting flesh all the time. Not exactly optimal. Also, we're on the 9th of Opal Midwinter, which means the second we roll over this spring, we're going to be year 101 into this fortress. And, uh... When we move into year 101, it means that someone could die of old age. Plenty of dwarves that are old enough to die of old age. You were wondering why the song didn't match the image that you were seeing? I um, once had a stream of Bellinair up that was muted, and another stream of Bellinair up in a different tab that wasn't muted. Bellinair is one of my teammates. And I couldn't figure out why the lip syncing was off. And I was very confused. It was like a few seconds behind. I was like, what the, f <laughs> what the fuck is happening here? Very, very, very confused. Hey, Jack Nurik. I think we're all doing good. Chad, how we all doing? Jack Nurik would like to know. But uh, I'm, uh, I'm doing okay. I, I slept for like, well, I, I streamed from about 1230 at night until about four o'clock in the morning. And then I slept from four until about 730. Uh, I got my blinds replaced, which I don't have the bill for yet, and hopefully I don't have to pay ten bajillion dollars for it. But I really wanted new blinds because I was so tired of looking at the old destroyed ones that were just holes. My ex is cat, so now I have like these sideways going blinds, which are basically blackout, which is nice. So they're much nicer. Um, hopefully it doesn't cost me too much to get those fixed. But um, regardless, I have new blinds, and uh, so blind got new blinds, and. Uh, yeah, aside from that, uh, waiting on some records to arrive. Oh, I did a stupid. So most of you may know at this point, I, I like records, right? I've I've been staring at a lot of the, the records in Polyvinyl's catalog for a while. If you're not familiar with Polyvinyl, they do vinyl pressings for in, indie groups like, or well, kind of big indie groups, I guess. Uh, people like Anamana Gucci, um, Starfucker, uh, Hum. They've done, they've done vinyl pressings for... Uh, American football, uh, a lot of old punk bands, uh, Joan of Arc, Aloha, a lot, a lot of bands that have just kind of been around in indie for a really long time. They do a lot of that kind of stuff. Anyway, they, they have a 70% off sale going on right now. And I was like, fuck it. I think it's time for me to buy a record or two from Polyvinyl just for myself, for my own listening purposes, because I wouldn't be able to stream them because th those bands are way too high profile. Um, and there's no way in hell I'd ever get the rights, but I just, I kind of, there's a couple of records I wanted. Anyways, I very quickly noticed that they have this thing where it's just um, $6, normally 15 and you just get one random record from their dis from their distro, from their releases. Uh, they also had a pack where you get three for $15, which is normally 50 bucks, mind you. So it's normally $50, and you get three records, right? Random ones. Um, I don't own anything from their pressings. Kind of interest in most of the things that they're pressing. And so instead of buying like one or two records and selecting what I wanted, I maybe bought six random records from their distro releases. So it cost me like $30 and $9 in shipping and I'm getting six records, which is like a wildly good deal. That sucks though. Jack Nurik. I, I, I hope that, um, I hope it wasn't too important of a test, you know? Because that sucks. Flunking a test is never a good feeling. Was this a super important test, or...? I, I, I know uh, I was talking with some people about um, schooling recently, and they, they've said that, that they've had some trouble uh, studying with everything being from home. It's been hard for them to find mo motivation when they're not going into class. I kind of understand. I, I can see that. Kind of a real issue. self led studying feels really different. Yeah. No, I... I 
I mean, as someone who was homeschooled growing up. I'm not going to say it necessarily favors those people. I think it's easier for those types of personalities to adapt to that sort of a work environment. For sure. um, I don't think it necessarily favors anybody. <laughs> it's just not easy, I think, is a better way to put it. But yeah, regardless, um, whenever those three records arrive, I'm going to super duper do a record unboxing on stream. Because why not? <laughs> Fucking why not? So I will be at some point opening up six random records from Polyvinyl. Seeing what we get. And if I absolutely hate them, then I can trade them with them. I've got some friends that all, who are local who own records. And I feel like I always have a hundred more pigs I still need to slaughter. It's easier, but directing your own learning leads to interesting questions others may not have asked before. I, I feel like the learning... This is going to be a weird sentence. I feel like the learning curve to helping yourself learn from home is harder than learning in a classroom. However, once you get over the initial learning curve of learning at, by yourself at home, you'll get more done and it'll be easier in the long run. And I... At, at least that's just my opinion. You know, do, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, teaching yourself at home, you will get more done in the long run versus. Like, being in a classroom. Being forced to be in a less pleasant environment and sit in a chair that's less comfortable and be around people that you may not like versus, you know, just talking with a teacher online and kind of doing stuff. Like, if that's your, all of your learning experience, I, I think it would be easier. Super curricular activity. I don't know if I like that, but okay. Super curricular sounds like a disease that you need to have removed. <laughs> I've got a super curricular growing on my ankle. I'm like, I mean, that's that's the benefit of being in any kind of public space, right? Being able to talk with the people around you, and that's a benefit for many people and many personality types, right? It can be a massive benefit, all walks of life for everything, work, uh, play. Uh, Socializing, any like kind of a, a, a lot of different disciplines and things can certainly benefit from uh, socializing with a group of people. Like, our social creatures, we communicate with groups well. It's what we're designed to do, right? But um, if left to your own devices and you're in an environment that you're extremely comfortable in, in the long run, you could be much more productive. No, 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 no. Good timing. No. No. What, what are we knowing today, Hi, Befit? I don't know what you're talking about. I did nothing wrong. Also, Knowing is a terrible movie. Don't watch it. And I like Nicolas Cage, but that's... God, that movie is bad. It's just so boring. <laughs> nothing happens, the movie. I need more space for coffins and um, statues. They're all going to be tombs. <laughs> like most stars. Uh, I think some some stars have had more bad movies than others, but 
Yes. Nick Cage has certainly had his share of bad movies. Although on the topic of Nick Cage, I want National Treasure 3, okay? Make that movie, please. They made a Ghost Rider movie? Oh, that sounds like it would be awful. Didn't they make two of those? I swear to God they made a sequel to Ghost Rider. That movie was god-awful. I can't minimize the class window and watch your favorite streamer at twitch.tv slash blind IRL instead of class, which is why I was, you know, telling somebody earlier to go do his fucking homework instead of watching my stream. You know? Should I make a command that's just exclamation point homework or exclamation point schoolwork, which it just makes the bot at you and tell you to go do your fucking classwork? Because I could do that. I could absolutely do that. Yes, 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 yes. I just work in general, sure. <laughs> Exclamation point homework times you out for an hour. Says, go do your fucking classwork. <laughs> Slash auto ban, I don't know. <laughs> Slash auto ban, bot speeds up. I mean, maybe. I, I, I wouldn't be against the idea, but we'd need to figure out some good way of doing it. If you haven't, you should watch Mandy. That's a really good Nicolas Cage movie. Mandy, actually, I think is maybe my favorite movie I've seen in the last, like, two years. Maybe three. It's like watching a two-hour-long doom metal music video and it's fucking great. Does anybody remember the good old-fashioned coffee pasta of, uh, guys, sorry, I'm stuck in traffic. Sorry, I'm stuck in traffic. It's just a lot of car emoji. I miss when people would just spam that in Twitch chat. Kind of. No. You don't, you don't remember that? That was a that was all the rage on Twitch for a minute. You'd cheer hundred bits and say, "Sorry, I, I'm stuck in traffic. I can't get past this fire truck, fire truck, fire truck, bus, school bus, fire truck, <laughs> taxi, taxi, car." And it would take text to speech hours to finish reading it. It was obnoxious, but also oddly hilarious after a little bit. I hate emote spam because emote spam doesn't directly give me money. And also, I never said that I necessarily liked it. I just simply said, does anybody remember that? Because I miss doing those because they were hilarious. Never said that I liked them in my chat or that I encourage it. But I, I do think it can be hilarious. I think that emote spam for the sake of emote spam that's mindless is annoying as fuck and stupid and does nothing but detract from conversation. However, however, I think it does have its place and can be when people would spam bots with question mark exclamation point. See, that stuff's annoying. At least the car one requires clicking multiple icons. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, did anybody die? I don't think so. The annual tribute. Bombasti just muck has arrived. It's spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings. I think they brought us an instrument. The two humans have arrived. Like a axeman and the, the merchant. One persimmon wood gust. Which is a wind instrument, which is funny that it's called a gust. And a uh, 25 copper arrows.
We have new channel emotes? Which ones are new for you? Thank you, humans, for your kind tribute. Coffee one? I mean, there's several, like, tier two emotes. Like, coffee's tier two, cheese is tier two. Some of the wall one, well, the, the door one is new. Well, the rest of the walls have been around for a super long time, but the wall with the door in it is new. Cheese for everyone! Sometimes you just need cheese, man. It's still on cooldown, Befit. Uh, apologies. I only have an eight second cooldown. It's just to remove spam problems, you know? Such miasma. Cheese for everyone! Oh, do you have cheese for everyone? Scott, I'm going to go uh, pull my insulin out of the fridge. I will be back momentarily. Chat room, thank you very much to everybody who's hanging out. You know, we've got a lot of people here and considering we're playing Dwarf Fortress. And I just get a big old round of beers. I will be back in a minute or so. I'm going to go prep my stuff for lunch. I haven't actually made a sandwich today, so I'm just going to do toast for lunch. Be back in a moment. Nani? All right, I return. You, wait, you bought a kilo? A kilo of what? Peter, are, are you banging seven gram rocks? Because that's how you roll? Are you by winning? Does anybody remember that? Good memes. Zapdos the second has been taken by a fey move. Ooh. A kilo of cheese. That's a lot of cheese. Jesus. Jesus, I mean. <clears throat> Name's a clothes shop. Ooh. Cloth. <laughs> that was a good remix, yeah. Cheese for everyone. I wonder what the fuck sh is Charlie. Che is Charlie Sheen still alive? Like, what the hell is he up to? Like. <laughs> I feel like I haven't thought about Charlie Sheen in about 10 years. He is? That's impressive. Fine. That's not a word I would use to describe Charlie Sheen, but he's on TikTok. 
I, is he on TikTok? He should be on TikTok. That seems like something Charlie Sheen would do. I learned the other day that um, David Hasselhoff is pretty active on TikTok. The uh, elven, the elves have arrived to trade as well. Wikipedia says he's alive. That's totally the most reliable source of whether or not somebody's dead. Because he is by winning. Are you bipolar? I'm by winning. Simpler times. I don't think Charlie knows. The, the, the important question is, is he still banging the seven gram rocks? Okay, so we got uh, raw green glass, diorite blocks, raw green glass, chestnut logs, oak logs, price opals, price opals, rope reed cloth, two pieces of pigtail cloth. This is a clother shop, bay mood. Any bets on what that dwarf makes, chat? The elves are here to trade, which means I need to trade them some not wood, but that's okay. I can give them a lot of meat pots because who doesn't want to buy meat pots? Pots filled with meat because I've got so much meat. It's actually ridiculous. And I need to get rid of most of this fucking meat because I'm never going to cook it all. And I have way too fucking much of it. So we should sell them a bunch of meat. Did, did he like... Wait, people searching for HIV? Wait, to like see if they have it or... Hello, shock and awful. Good username. I like that one. It's mostly sober. You know what? Good for him. That's all I can say. You bought 1.5 kilo of cheese. That's a lot. Of I need to actually, like, go grocery shopping. Oh, interesting. Zapdos II, the administrator, has created Gin Tishbesdos. Minkil Ariel. A split pigtail skirt. And claims it as a family heirloom. First artifact of the stream. It's worth 46,040 dwarf bucks. It's called Crewmired the Leopard of Water. Yeah, not to be confused with a split pig pea skirt. Very different. It means it has like a, a part in the middle of it somewhere. Are we at? I don't have a raw number for you, and I don't feel like counting, but probably 40, 50. This is a split pigtail skirt. Craft's worship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushion cut praise opals and encircled with bands of pigtail and emerald cut praise opals and oval diorite cabochons. It is made from pigtail cloth and this object menaces with spikes of rope reed and oak and made from green and green glass. Spikes of rope reed, oak, and green glass. On the item is an image of fight threat, the lamanite mug, in pigtail. On the item is an image of an octagon cut gems in chestnut. On the item is an image of Rhinestone the dwarf in green glass. Rhinestone is laughing. The artwork relates to the fey mood of the dwarf Rhinestone in Long Death in the early summer of the year 19. It's very similar to a banana split skirt. Jack Knight. You are indeed immortalized in an indestructible artifact in the world now. Yeah, this is why I don't really care about how many artifacts I have. Because half of these are just like named items. I still love one that... I st my favorite artifact though is still just Board Guy because he named it after himself. It's just a mudstone mini forge, but it's just called Board Guy. <laughs> Do some Thadak. Board Guy. And then we also have all of these books that you kind of have to dig through. Nope. 
I think Ryan's on multiple artifact. I feel like I flew past it. That or it's already being hauled. Oh, there it is. My bad. Yeah, that's never going to be helpful, Nets. Don't worry about it. It's all good. I found it. Board guy? Oh, yeah, no. Board guy definitely worked. But that wasn't the one I was looking for. Also, for anybody who's uh, paying any attention to the uh, hot potato charity event, Cringer's confirmed. If anybody watches Cringer. This Cringer's great. I, I think last year he, like... Uh, he he straight up like sent like commented after it was over was like why did they invite me and we felt bad kim's the second has grown to become a child we got burke black italix fringer got all the cool kids oh it's 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 gonna be a it's gonna be a good year ryan kiri's kicking it off yeah we got burke those are all the confirmed ones Rather, Suey got Burke, I should. Because Suey's doing good work. I mean, if you just scroll down the hot potato Twitter, you'll see all the people that are announced currently. Like, just some names, uh, Ranger, Fruit Bats, uh, me, obviously, Burke Black, Exeli, Ika. Obviously, everybody from my stream team. It's going to be good stuff. Also, for reference, uh, during the Hot Potato Charity, which is from the 25th to the 30th at the end of this month, and this is the reason I don't have the Make Me Take a Day Off Channel Points Redemption thing right now, is because I'm probably going to take between three and f the whole five days off. What, you're 100% certain that Burke's just going to drop it? Yeah. So I, I will probably just be monitoring and helping and doing anything I can behind the scenes throughout that. Probably still do YouTube stuff in the background, um, but I will probably be taking a few days off of just the stream because I want to be following that and helping out with that in any way that I can. So, Petra, satisfied at work. Good shit. It's nice to have a dwarf that's just happy to mostly be just a miner, you know? I think we should queue up some clothing, though. As well as some more statues. Do you want me to read the last Discord story? Oh, there's enough. Chat, you guys need to be filling out the Discord stories faster, yo. All right. <clears throat> yeah, there's like a new sentence. I can just reread the one I read earlier. So if you want to add to this, join my Discord, exclamation point, Discord in the chat. Um, and uh, add words to the... And add words to the add a word stories room, one word at a time, and I will read them whenever people activate that uh, channel points redemption. Uh, cats are mischievous, uh, counterparts of dogs without slobber. Uh, zombies ate cheese fingers before swimming in fire. Uh, hunger sounds like a rumbled song of turtles having uh, boat troubles. Boats don't drink moldy urine. I detest chicken soup. 
I hate you, chat, for writing that. Uh, my god, is this a sensible cardboard box? What must we fight about? Flagnists? Is that a word? In love with uh, Mongolian cats. Rhythmic popcorn dying from skidding notes. Forgetful Olms don't remember anything. That's a very functional sentence. A duck-dog hybrid left in fear. And I added a word. Good job, chat. There's two Twitters you should follow, Ryan. You should follow the Hot Potato Challenge Twitter because it's going to be a hell of a fucking event. And you should also um, follow Halcyon Frequency on Twitter and then go and retweet. Uh, not our most recent tweet, but the one before uh, because we're giving away... We have literally multiple keys for every single Worms game. We, we, we have more Worms keys than anybody could ever reasonably give away. So if you go to twitter.com slash Halcyon MHZ... Uh, and scroll down to uh, this particular tweet right here, which I will post in the chat. Um, tomorrow morning, the, when whenever Kiri wakes up, I guess, she's going to be doing a drawing from anybody who follows the account, likes that tweet, and retweets that tweet. Um, and I totally forgot to actually trade with the elf. I'm real bad at that, because they never have anything fun, although sometimes they have unicorns. Oh, next year. Also, because I was super distracted. As I do. The artifact was kind of distracting, though. I don't know what Empires of Eve is. Oh, that that's the book, right? If I'm not mistaken, right? Also, I'm literally waiting for an email back from a certain company so that I can announce a thing. You have the first edition hardcover of the first book? That's like a, a, a good thing to, to get as somebody who used to play a lot of Eve. I'm surprised there isn't more books about Dwarf Fortress, to be honest. I know a lot of people, myself included, feel that Krug Smash should write a book about Dwarf Fortress, but... He's too busy being a YouTuber to, uh, you know, write a book. And unfortunately, as a YouTuber, it kind of sucks all your time away. Kinda. Whoa, oh, dude, yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking sick. Hell yeah. Woo! Hi, Zapdos. Or Fortress, my love. I don't know. I, I would buy a Scorch a Scorched Fountain like kids book edition. Scorch Fountain, the coloring book. <laughs> coloring uh, Necromancer's butt. It'd be great. Beer, chat, beer. I heard stupid once beer. We haven't had enough reasons to post beer today, let's be honest. We always need more reasons to post beer. All right, you know, let's do this. 
I need to uh, make a better ramp system here. Using the wrong hotkey combinations. Working on automatic. Time for us to uh, actually make this look presentable. Instead of just like an old set of bedrooms. Especially considering Jelly Butt's no longer in prison down here. What happened to her? She died? Mm -hmm. She is in the realm of the dehydrated and in a coffin. Specifically of Jelly's request. Jelly asked me to um, get her dwarf just out and so they could run around and Die of their of their, of her own request instead of like, you know, just dying in prison. Oh. You're left with 21 dwarves. Are they all like mentally hardened or are they like mental wrecks? Because like I feel like in the, in that sort of a situation you're gonna end up with one of two things: very mentally tough dwarves that will survive anything and be incredibly strong. Or they're just like crying on the floor in a puddle of their own mucus and sweat. One of the two. And there's like no in between. Good evening, Gopher. I hope that your evening is going well. You know, I'm not going to lie. Part of the reason I'm excited for the Steam version of Dwarf Fortress is I want to watch Burke Black and Cringer and all those guys stream Dwarf Fortress. Time to chill out. Sounds like a good way to spend an evening. I think plan for tonight is we'll do play another, I don't know, hour and a half to two hours of this, and then probably Ziggurat. Keep the stream relatively short today because I'm going to need to nap tonight uh, because tomorrow, starting at 1 a.m. Pacific time, basically 9 a.m. UK time, um, I'm going to be uh, streaming Worms on the official Team 17 uh, Twitch channel uh, with my team. We are going to be uh, invading and taking over their Twitch channel. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Worms is uh, old. <laughs> Worms is having their 25th anniversary this year, and it's um, kind of a big deal. So they've sponsored myself and my, my whole team, all of us, um, to play Worms all night on their channel. And... I don't know about you guys, but I base I I'm not gonna say I grew up on worms, but I certainly played a shit ton of worms for a minute there when I was a child. I think it was the, like the first demo I like Worms Armageddon. I think was the first Worms demo or the first demo that I put a stupid amount of time into. So over over the span of eight hours, we're gonna be streaming uh, everything from. Worms Armageddon, all the way up to Clan Wars and WMD, as well as the 3D one and everything else they they did. Basically, we're, we're going to be playing every Worms game, um, and so it, it it should be a good deal of fun. They'll be giving away games in the in the chat, and uh, we'll be having fun. 
Don't be that guy. Come on. Watch. Work with me here. I'm trying to promote an event that I'm getting paid to promote, okay? <laughs> work with me here. The ladder you haven't seen in a long time? Worms Ultimate Mayhem is available on Steam. You can get it right now. I think it's like 15 bucks. But, um, yeah, we're giving away keys for Worms right now as well on the uh, Steam Twitter page. So you can go enter for chance to win keys for Worms. And yeah, it'll, it'll be a bit of fun all around, I think. I'm going to say those are ores, so let's get those. No, they're not. There was a Worms bundle just a little while ago. Yeah. I mean, they, they do Worms bundles with all the Worms games on Humble pretty free. Also, speaking of bundles and stores and things, I have this, which I'm not heavily promoting right now because it's not quite what I want it to be yet. But um, Nexus is a thing that a lot of streamers have been jumping on recently. It's basically just a storefront where you can make a personalized little collection of up to 10 games to sell. Um, so it's not unlike any of the other key seller sites. They don't have uh, good old games as an option. It's just Steam keys. So it kind of, it's not perfect. Um, but I have an account to that now that it's public. And I'm planning and working towards kind of making a little curated list of roguelikes available for sale on Steam. Right now it's just like you can get Yakuza Like a Dragon and Risk of Rain and a bunch of other like well-known games. Um, Pre-order some other things if you want. I don't know. Uh, but it's it's currently like just kind of a lot of pretty mainstreamy stuff. But I'm working with them to hopefully get a list of uh, interesting roguelikes that are up on Steam that maybe you've heard of, maybe you haven't. Um, so I'm trying to do something interesting with it rather than just having another list of the generic Paradox games available for sale. So I've already spoke with Epion to try and get Jupiter Hell on there. Um, I'm... I, I would like to get Caves of Cut on there and a few other games. So I, ideally, I can do something fun with that that's a little bit unique instead of just another more of the same games. That... Dragon Man, what's up? Also, um, if you're interested in buying a game or looking into buying a game, let me know. And I'll see if I can put it on the store for you, if that makes sense. Because it's pretty easy for me to just click a couple buttons and chuck a game up there. So if there's a game that you're looking forward to or a game that you want to pre-order, ask me and I'll see if it's up there. I don't think I've ever eaten Arby's in my entire life. What the heck is Arby's like? I have no frame of reference for Arby's. But hello, Dragon Man. How's it going well? Sorry for all the constant sellout and self-promo shit. But a lot of that stuff's going on right now. It is interesting, isn't it? It's also like more or less just open for streamers at this point. None of the bodies are being disposed of. Have they been claimed? They might be forbidden. Make sure that the bodies are claimed. But how's my local uh, tabaholic doing? Like my big my my big issue I like I certainly have issues with um access. I don't I don't think it's a perfect system. Um but it's kinda neat. I like the uh, transparency of it. You see exactly how much money the streamer is getting. Neil, thanks for the host. Yeah, if you hit O, um, I can show you what he's talking about. And then make sure dwarves are set to gather bodies. Where does the water go after falling? I can show you. Water starts up here. It only works seasonally because the stream freezes in the winter. There's one screw pump that uh, is being powered by a single windmill. This lever shuts the whole thing off in case there's a problem. Uh, the water goes down here, along here, flows over here, falls down through into here, through my tavern. 
And usually when they're dancing, they'll stand over here and walk past that um, to get mugs from here. Um, but they'll, they'll, they'll walk through it. And it flows down, falls all the way down to here, at which point it flows through that weird thingy that I made, then off the map to the right and off the map to the left. That's where the water goes. literally just filling all this in because I'm kind of tired of it looking like a weird temporary fort thingy. Sort of, yeah. Made a river beneath the river. Yep. So if you dig all the way up to the edge of the map underground, smooth the rock at the edge of the map because you can't actually dig out the tiles at the edge of the map. Smooth the rock at the end of the map and then engrave fortifications by hitting D and then capital F, carve fortifications. You carve fortifications on the wall at the end of the map and then you redirect water towards that, the water will flow off the edge of the map. Your forts are always expansive, so much walking space. I mean, I like big open spaces, man. I mean, dwarves always want to see the world converted into a great mining pit. This whole fortress is a giant pit. And as Eric Shadowblade stated on YouTube, it's not only a giant pit, it's an open grave. A giant open grave. It was a little dark, but you know. Those dwarf fortresses. A little dark. When are you playing dwarf fortress? When are you going to get out of your hellish weeb shit and come back over to the, 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 the realms of the DFs? I, it, it, Ligerous in, in, in chat plays a, a, a bunch of uh, VR chat. Hellish weeb shit. Yes. And then he gives me an anxiety attack with the number of tabs he has. Dude literally has thousands of tabs. I just... Ah! And you, want, you know how many tabs I have open right now? Two. A dashboard and YouTube. Did. Two. Uh, and then yeah, humans with the Akbols have arrived to, to trade. I mean, when I'm working, I'll have like maybe five or six, but then they all just get closed. Cause like, nope, nope. I have to have to keep shit locked up. I'm just gonna sell the humans all of my meat. Another tantrum, oh God. And then I'm going to make rock hot 100. And then I'm going to slaughter a bunch more piggies. I got so many goddamn pigs, I don't know what to do with them all. No, I, I'm very much like a, kind of a minimalist when it comes to like life, the space I live in, and like my my monitor layouts. So, uh, the, the, also the uh, Royal Treasurer from Pastor Ol has arrived. Um, so when, when, when it comes to like my monitor layouts, I have like two icons on each monitor. I, most of the stuff is down at the bottom. Like this is what my desktop looks like. I, I have three screens and they're all about this full. Like I got some doctor shit, Jupiter hell keys and a recycling bin, that's it. Um, like I have almost nothing on my uh, on my actual homepage. The other two monitors are exactly the same. One just has DF on it, and then the other one has a folder enabled, labeled roguelikes, which just has some like free roguelikes I've downloaded. And that's basically it. And my browsers are exactly the same way. It's not just because I use Chrome. It doesn't matter what browser I'm using. I have no tabs and no bookmarks. Um, my apartment is the same way. Everything's very clean, very tidy, and if, it, like the concept of that aqua hurts me 
Like it's stre like I get anxiety just thinking about having that many tabs. I look at that many tabs and I have a mild panic attack because like that's because for me my tabs are my to do list. If I have a tab open, it means I need to do that thing. When that tab is closed, that thing is finished. It's done. It's a task I no longer need to complete. Tax task is finished. I can move on to the next thing. But when I see like 500 open tabs on the side and another 3,000 tabs open at the top and every icon is like this big, I see a to-do list. I don't see tabs. I see a to-do list. And my brain just freaks out. I like every task to be done. I, I hate having unfinished tasks. Unfinished tasks hurt me, scare me. Anyway, um, on behalf of the Merchant's Guild, let me extend my greetings to your people. There is much to discuss. The world is the same as ever. We don't do anything because we're humans, except for occasionally have a civil war and then we don't show up for a couple of years. What requests do we have? Uh, what requ what requests do you have of our merchants? I really hope that they brought me those turkeys. Um, all the woods, please. Nope, that's weapons. Uh, where's wood? There's wood up top. You've been watching a lot of Krug Smash the last month or so? Making you kind of thirsty for, for damn dwarves, but also sort of holding out for the Steam release too? Eh, fuck the Steam release. Just start playing dwarves. I may be slightly biased. Though. Uh, We have finalized the import agreement. Feel free to go over the document. You want to be a house? Here's the thing. If you want to wait for the Steam release, sure, wait for the Steam release. But stream DF enough that you're a known household name by the time the Steam re release rolls around so that when the Steam release rolls around, people know that you've been streaming uh, DF and then they go watch you, you know? Instead of being like, who the fuck's this noob? But then again, all the people watching DF on day one are just going to be like, Burke Black, he knows everything about strategy games. Let's go watch that. And Burke's just going to be like, I'm a noob. And I'm going to be like, oh, you poor soul. Let's discuss what we're willing to offer for your craftsman. Or they'll be like, Quill 18, he knows everything about video games. And I'm going to be like, have you actually seen Quill 18 play Dwarf Fortress? He knows, a, he knows, he knows enough to like get around the basics, but like, no, dude, dude's got no idea what he's doing. I love Quill, don't get me wrong, but... Gonna try and RP dro the dwarves? I mean, I RP the dwarves. Uh, well then, we have finalized the export agreement. Feel free to go over the document. On behalf of the Merchant's Guild, let me bid you farewell to you and your stout dwarves. Until next time, next year. Trading for the year 106, or 101. Greater has been requested at the depot. I can't wait for Robias to make a giant fort in the shape of a penis. Because that's all he ever does. That weird... Well, maybe not weird, but he's definitely got a fascination for uh, phallic-shaped objects. And I'll just be over here going, I'll still be here when all these guys leave, so, you know. That or I'll just be, like, standing on my porch in my boxers screaming, Get off my lawn! Hmm, one of the two. Most likely the second one. Let's be honest. Very much that kind of person. My broker is sleeping instead of trading. Oi, a dude. Well, I know why. What? This one? Yeah. Uh, up until now, my longest one, I think, was made it into the 30s of years. This I mean, madness. we're at year 101. Yeet. Hi, Hobo. I was you.
We'll hold true. Yeah, we'll still be here. We'll still be here. Hey, Dorf, get up. There you go. I love how when they first wake up out of bed, they walk super slowly for a moment. Like, they're sleepy. Uh, got me peahen, a boar, yak, sheep, and eagle. Look at the sheep. Brought a cat. And we'll trade all that meat for that sheep. And we'll trade with the other humans. But how is Hobo today? How's things? How's Hobo feeling? Hobo feeling better? I hope Hobo's feeling. Wow, wow, now, now. But yeah, no, the goal for this fort is to keep it alive for a thousand years, so. I am just over 10% done. 10.1% done. We're almost 40 streams in. I'll buy a ram. That's glory ram. Yep, I have... Uh, one active fort, which is my community world, which is a publicly available world, which I update relatively frequently, which you'll be able, to, which you can go download if you want and uh, explore in your own time. Um, I can give you a link for that if you'd like. I also uh, have another world which I generated while I was interviewing Tarn the last time I interviewed him, which is a, a rather old world, which is a long, which is large, so it's a very big world. Kind of want to do some adventuring in that world. Might do a few more forts. Um, I recently did a fortress called Shattered Monster for Halloween in that fort. We're going to do another special fort for probably around a week or two around the holiday, so around Christmas. Um, I don't know, maybe like try and focus on getting a bunch of elves in the fort and giving away free shit and be, uh, you know, uh, d d twice actually. I, more than that. I, I met him at PAX West uh, last year, back when we had conventions. Um, and... Uh, He's been on my stream twice. Yeah. So up here now we have uh, two reindeers, a reindeer cow, and reindeer cow. We have a stray unicorn, a horse, alpaca, and another alpaca. I don't know. I, I think that that would be fun. <laughs> Get a bunch of elves in the fort and put them in, put them to labor, making uh, toys out of wood. To give away for free to the human. That'd be fun. I mean, that'd be fun. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out something to do for holiday. Maybe just give everybody mugs for... And Kibbs, the dwarven child, has been possessed. Well, we all knew that you were possessed, but what were you possessed with? Obviously, the mood of the strange variety. You drama Santa? Isn't that just regular Santa? Gotta check something in the background.
Karn is chill as hell. It's cool of him to come on your stream. We're talking about future updates. Uh, basically, thing. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you want, you can watch them. Uh, they're both archived on my YouTube channel. Um, one of them, I think, is the featured video, and then the other one is one of my most viewed videos, so they're pretty easy to find. I mean, it's two hours of quality dwarf content, though. I'll tell you that. Claim to craft dwarf stuff. Huh? Follow the child. Sorry for just being silent for a second, doing a thing in the background here. Poor child's going to take forever to haul that damn boulder. Boulder, boulder, boulder. Cyrillac, how we doing? We're waiting for a child to haul boulders. Taking the child forever. Because they're a child. And they have little legs. Now that I actually have a bunch of space for meat, it's time to slaughter all of the piggies. Hope nobody in this fort likes pigs because they are our main source of yes for food. Hyperlight Drifter is mwah, for music. Did I give him a wheelbarrow? I can't. It's a strange mood. So he gets and carries what he wants. They won't use wheelbarrows for strange moods. So I totally would have given him a wheelbarrow, but... This is the most recent new addition to the fort, too. Gives the second. Tiny little child. Currently is disgusted dwelling upon being in the sunlight. He's one year old. Born on year 100. 
Spitalier and Cryo are his parents. His older brothers and sisters are uh, not Goffer, are a chimp and pink fluffy. I mean, it's par for the course, honestly. I have no interest in playing Hyper Light Drifter, but man, that aesthetic is pretty damn good. That damn aesthetic. Also, someone on the Discord's like, yo, can I ask a question on the DF here? Like, yes, but like, I could do it faster if you were in my Twitch chat. Sometimes I think people think Twitch streams are scary. Not gonna lie. But yeah, hopefully fog. Hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow I can announce the thing that Fog's been working on. Because Fog did a, a bunch of real good work on some stuff for my stream team. And hopefully I can announce it tomorrow. I mean, I think my parents think Twitch streams are weird, but they also realize that somehow I magically make money doing this, so they support me in my endeavors. Although I think my dad thinks it's much more of a marketing thing than I treat it. Like, when my dad talks about it, he talks about it in like the context of like running a TV show and like calling people and asking for sponsorships. Like he very much talks about it in like kind of a old timey TV show kind of way, which I think is kind of funny, but not entirely wrong. Uh, it's just a little bit more modern than I think he thinks it is. A little bit more sleek per se. I'm sorry, what? I don't know what you mean. Just just DM me whatever you're referring to. Fuck. Did you think Twitch streams are weird? Uh. How many networks are carrying me? God. <laughs> God! <laughs> that hurts just thinking about it. Child is walking so slowly. Although I think the correct response to that would be Amazon. Also, Aussie Wizard, um, something that I, popped into my brain just now, so I might as well say it out loud. Because you were talking about like streaming and stuff. Maybe have a fortress that you play on stream and a world that you play on stream and then a world that you don't. So you don't have to feel bad about playing your own world because that's your world for you, not you know a world for other people. So if you feel like playing a particular world, just turn the stream on. And uh, the child has begun a mysterious construction. Grabbed three nice boulders, rough sards, rough purple spinels, pearwood logs, pig leather, rough purple spinels, gray boar bone, and iron bars. And it's a craft dwarf shop. <laughs> the internet's have signed. Okay, I, I, I may have told you this before, Quatch. My dad doesn't believe this anymore, okay? But genuinely, when I tried to explain to my parents that I'd cut back my hours at my job, after I'd been streaming for like three years, mind you, without telling my parents or anybody in my extended family that I'd been streaming, I told my parents that I was cutting back my hours at my job down to, I think it was from 40 down to 26 hours, I think is what I cut down to. 
It was either it was either that or twenty. I think I think it was twenty six at that point. I cut down to twenty six hours, and the reason I was cutting it down was so that I could stream video games on the internet. And I remember my dad having this like taking me aside from my mother and saying, "You know, I have a genuine suspicion of something." Okay, what's that? She goes, "I think that this Twitch site that you're talking about might not actually be what you think it is." I'm like, okay. And he's like, "I think it might potentially." be a collection of highly intelligent bots designed to make children uh, be distracted and not pay attention to schoolwork. I'm like, excuse me? He's like, how do you know that those people in your chat are real people? I'm like, Dad, I've met them. <laughs> like, I've gone to the convention and met these people. I know they're real. I swear. I've slept on his couch. <laughs> Anyways, you guys just got outed for what you really are. You're robots. Anyway, he doesn't believe that anymore, but at, at the time, he did. It's, it's like, God damn. It's like, wow, AI got smart. I love telling that story because it's it's true. Anyway, now my mom has like a 40-month resub streak on uh, uh, Amazon Prime, so. Beat that, chat. 39 months, specifically, my mother has been subscribed to me. Right there. That's me mom's account, Blind IRL Mom. She's made her account in November 25th, 2016, shortly after that conversation with my dad, actually, and has been subbed for 39 months with Twitch Prime. Shoutouts to me mom. Has your, has your mom been subscribed to you for 39 months with Twitch Prime? I think not! <laughs> kind of great. I, I think she also has, like, more channel hours than most of you. But let me, let me find... How many hours does my mom have? I'm curious. My mom has 6,026 hours in my channel and 12,115 channel points. Actually, I think she's just making sure I'm not dead. Because, like, being a type 1 diabetic, my mom worries about me now. So, like, if my stream isn't on, if I take a random day off, she'll, like, send me a text by dude. She's like, are you okay? I'm fine. Make sure I'm. She just makes sure I'm not dead. Kibbs, the dwarven child, has created Anil Khan, a nice ring, and claims it as an heirloom in the name of the family ancestor Cryo. Aw, it's dedicated to his dad. That's adorable. Anybody who said ring, grats, you did it. Anil Ken. I read that as Anakin the first time I saw it. I'm not going to... 70,800. That's not nothing. That's a pretty valuable little ring. This is a nice ring. All crafter. Quality. It is encrusted with a nice cabochon and cushion cut purple spindles and decorated with pear wood and encircled with bands of round nice cabochon and pig leather. This object menaces with spikes of nice sard and pig bone and iron. On the item is an image of tapioca. Cobalt knows the dwarf and dwarf purple spinel. Tapioca cobalt no nose is surrounded by the dwarf. The artwork relates the ascension of the dwarf tapioca cobalt nose to the position of countess of the ignited creation in the early spring of 24. Two years later, her leg would be ripped off by another child uh, while the child was tantruming uh, due to her uh, telling most or uh, convicting most of my dwarves of crimes for accidentally ex uh, selling a single scepter. Every single one of the dwarves got uh, a 200-day sentence or a severe beating. So the result was uh, not many people died, but to this day, uh, dwarves like Aegis is still incapable of walking. Wherever he is. He's around here somewhere. I did, I did follow him, but... I like jump. Child must have just read about it in his history lessons, you know?
There it is. <sighs> With literally everything they make, cabochons are actually very com a common cut of gem. Uh oh. Open and just. Uh oh. Petra got 113 days in prison because I've missed a mandate. At least it's not a beating. Fuck it, you're creating a new world. Sometimes you just gotta do that, man. Sometimes you just gotta make a new world, run around it in a couple minutes, and then call it a day. I mean, Dwarf Fortress taught me that one, cabochons exist, and two, what a cabochon is. Killed a lot of dwarves. He feels patient for being confined. I was confined. I'm very patient. That's kind of adorable. This dwarf is 63 years old. Jeez. Let her sit for a little bit. How she feels. Meanwhile, warm shadows over here just having perma panic attacks. In prison forever. Enjoy your life sentence, warm shadow. Um, interested near a completely sublime restraint. Restraint is interested near a wonderful seat and patient after being confined. And still feels patient for being confined. And to be to be fair, these prison cells are pretty nice. Rose gold statue. An Electrum chest, silver cabinet, a masterwork quality bed, black bronze chain, silver table, and a silver throne, and vertical Electrum bars. Some of them even have engravings on the walls. Where are you hearing about that, Stone? Also, don't worry about censoring cuss words in the chat. Also, Zapdos, whenever, um... Whenever Odd Realm updates again, right? I need to play that again. Do a couple streams of it. I, I feel like I, I should do... Actually, I should pester the Odd Realm dev to get his game up on uh, Nexus. Be a good one. Such a fun time killer. You can sick, sink so much time into it. Be satisfied no matter what. Yeah. Good amount of potential. Waiting for more updates on that one. Like the undead race. Odd Realm is neat because... Oh, wow. Spitalier just gave birth to another girl. Which means we are well in the range of enough dwarves right now to... Uh, Potentially get a land titan. Also, chat room. Uh, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100. If you do not currently have a dwarf in this fortress, or have had one in the past and would like another, type in a number between 1 and 100, and the person who's closest to the number that I'm thinking will get Lorebound. A child who will, of course, grow up and have a, a long life. You know, this is the first time this has actually happened, but uh, Metsus Graven, I was thinking about 11, and you typed in 11, so.
the fort. Your mother and father are Spitalier and Cryo. Your older brothers are Notgoffer, Ara, Chimp, and Kibbs the second. And your older sister is Pink Fluffy, who I think is dead yet. So your older sister's passed away, so you only have brothers. Personally sees Mary waking as a waste. Yeah, I agree. She was born today, which makes her fur very young indeed, and her first words are dada. Her hair is short and neatly combed. Her ears are somewhat short, and her nose is her hair is a crew, and her skin is sandy taupe. Her eyes are cobalt. Shouldn't the parents choose the name? God, that would be way too complicated to, like, try and locate the parents of a dwarf. It's just like I'm DMing somebody on Discord to be like, Hey, uh, your dwarf just had a kid. <laughs> what do you want to name it? <laughs> These users in Twitch chat all want it. Who are you picking? He seeks out exciting and adventurous situations. Not a private person. Freely shares details of her life and is extremely confident in her self abilities. She is grounded in reality and often nervous. Often acts with compassion. Tends to be a little tight with resources when working on specific problems. And rarely feels discouraged. Tends to form only tenuous emotional bonds with others. Doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges. It could be considered rude and does not often feel lustful. She has a little interest in joking around and she thinks she is fairly important in the grand scheme of things. Needs alcohol to get through the working day. Welcome, child, to the fortune. I'm just personally kind of hoping that we get uh, some more Ettons or something, because I would really like to uh, you know, have some more Ettons in the fort. I actually, I, I really want to get a female Etten. We can breed Etten. Because I think that would be be fun. Dwarven pathing. I'd like to try and breed Ettons. I don't know if we would successfully be able to breed Ettons, but I think having a bunch of baby Ettons. That or, you know, just send me a goddamn dragon. Either or. I'm honestly not too picky. Although dragon might be scary. But yeah, no, Tuesday there won't be a normal stream because I will be sleeping most of the day. There will be a normal stream um, Tuesday night. Most likely. I'll probably do a night stream. How's Petra doing? See, this is how you have to take a prison sentence. With stride, look at this dwarf. Patient after being confined. Interested near a fine bed. Interested near a completely sublime restraint. Interested near a wonderful seat. Interested near fine vertical bars. And interested near a very fine table. Like, that's proper dwarven behavior. I, I actually, I don't think I've ever seen patient. I've seen, like, bored. But I don't believe I've ever seen patient being Or maybe I have, but I don't remember. I 
as normal. They're, that's still pretty horrifying. Still pretty horrifying. A cheetah-sized dragon sounds just plain adorable. Shit, that was larger than... That was a larger message than you thought? Oh, it's... All right, chat. Uh, it's 2.30. I'm hungry. All right, so I didn't make a sandwich today. Um, so I'm just going to have some, some some quick food um, alongside of the stream without make, like, eating a whole sandwich. Um, so I'm going to take a five-minute lunch break. Um, seriously, though, you know, there's 96 people watching. I know that we got some hosts earlier. We got pretty lucky today. Um, but uh, thank you so much to everybody who's been watching today. Thank you so much to everybody who's been hanging out. Watching dwarfs. You know, um, I always go back and mention this, but roughly uh, midway through 2019 or early 2019 when I was really starting to power stream a lot of DF and kind of hurting my stats, I did have a few friends reach out and basically say, hey, stop doing that because you're going to fucking throw your stream. Like, I don't think so. I, th I think I can make this work. And clearly we're making this work. So Outlaw, if you have more questions when I get back, feel free to ask stuff. All right, with doing that, um, but I will, I will be back in a couple of minutes. I gotta go to do my injections and stabbing myself with needles and all that awful type 1 diabetic shit. And, uh, then I'm gonna eat some toast. So, I will see you guys in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere too fast. And, um, I'll let you follow a boozle. That'll work.
Uh... Ah! Autumn has come. The annual tributes have arrived. <clears throat> Apologies. But it's that time of year. Zapdos, this is starting starting to turn into the one scene from the Matrix Reloaded. Um, you okay there, human? Yeah, there you go. Something startled him. Um, this is starting to turn into the scene from the Matrix Reloaded. When Trinity says, "Well, we're we're all standing here, and either we all die right here, right now, or we all go our separate ways." I get three. One from each of the human factions that I'm trading with. Three. Every time I get an email right now, I get kind of excited. All right, so let's start off with the group of Soren. Oh, hey, they brought us a few things. They brought us a Kesserite nest box. How thoughtful. Copper pick. One large jelly opal. Five turkey meat. And 25 iron arrows. And then, of course, the Council of Men for Autumn of the Year 106. A rock crystal ring. Yo. Yo. A spiked copper ball, copper toy hammer. Man, I'm like stoked on that rock crystal ring. Jet, I, I think the humans are asking us to marry them. Let me know when you're ready, Stone. How's it? Stone is uh, has very kindly volunteered to keep uh, track of every single um, uh, thing that's been given to us by the uh, humans. Also, glanced over at Reddit, yeah? And uh, this is what I see. <laughs> Maybe not the safest of ways to get down there, but sure. You throw a handy, a handy nuke down the sacred well. Yep. <laughs> On the first day of autumn, the humans gave to me diamond crystal rock ring. Second day of autumn, the humans gave to me two gremlin tears and a diamond crystal rock gem ring. I forgot what I said. Third day of autumn, the humans gave to me three spider silk. No, three cave spider silk. Two gremlin tears. Rock crystal ring. Bunch of random gra crap as well. No. Uh -oh. We're getting dive bombed by birds. All right, guys, it's your favorite command. Time, time to use your favorite command. <clears throat> getting dive bombed by Kias. Or don't, you know, that's up to you too. Um, hmm. 
Everybody's just getting interrupted by Kias left and right. That means Kia time. Ah, uh, yeah. Now they, they always attack us for early and mid autumn, and they're usually gone by late autumn. You know, chat, I've had some people kind of express that they think that they're the only person who really enjoys this fort because of how slow it really is. Because it is very much a slow fort with not a huge amount happening. What do you guys think of the Seinfeld of Dwarf Fortress playthroughs? AKA Long Death Millennium. Also, the elite wrestler stabbed uh, that Kia in the right upper leg with his steel spear and the severed part sails off in an arc and the Kia falls over and hits the ground. Only three Kias left. We're getting very good at this. <laughs> Needs more slap bass cute theme song. I mean, this is kind of the Seinfeld of the War Fortress playthroughs. Nothing really happens. How many years has it been? 101. Almost 102. Ace Lord bashes the Kia in the head with his Iron Morning Star, which is kind of awesome. And the severed part sails off in an arc. I'm the kind of. Wave Thrash has a Morning Star. Curious, I want to read about that morning star. It's covered in Kia blood, as it should be. It's killed one Kia. The well crafted iron morning star and adorned with hanging rings of elk. Oof. Pete, what's up? You missed Tatanka, who was here earlier. Got a bunch of, like, OGs in the chat. Oh, geez. Also, they're all, like, going for my weapons for some reason. <clears throat> Not the smartest. How's things, Pete? But yeah, no, we're we're up to uh, year one hundred and one current. We hit the end of autumn; it'll be year one hundred two. But we'll see. Uh, if you if you don't respond in chat when they show up, I will look. Uh... And a caravan has arrived. I was going to say, where are the wagons? It really perplexed me for a second. The dwarves are here to trade. Tis time for their annual tribute. Oh, I need to make a sock. You know what, let's just make 50 cloth. Everybody needs. Always time to make socks, damn it. Hmm? Sell training weapons. Sell a few bins of cut gems. Might as well sell those spikes. Cause None of those are tame. I'm trying to find stuff I don't really. Really no. All the instruments that we're not using. I don't really have much to sell this year. Charcoal though. Trade has been requested. Um, also, Kata, 
catapult parts. I think that's probably it. We have a lot of catapult parts to sell. But Pete, how are we doing today? Day is going well. My name is Asteth. Still your liaison from the mountain home. Let's discuss your secret. I'll bet you Asteth is getting rather old. Much to share. Information has been added to the city. Old info. We've updated your maps. Uh, wood. Please and thanks. The reason I'm trading for wood every time is so that I don't need to cut down as much wood and thus piss the elves off as quickly. Let's discuss what we're willing to offer you for your Grand Crastor ship. It is legend in these parts. Brace, let's cut gems, powder, glass tools. Clear glass tools. That's oddly specific. Goes to third. I look forward to our meeting next year. Our fortunes rise and fall together. May long death live prosper. I don't know why I did a pseudo Star Trek y reference there, but. You know, I'm kind of impressed with how much uh, people like those little one-minute tutorials I put up. They seem to be doing okay. Like, they're not doing great on YouTube. Like, they're not setting the planet on fire by any stretch. But they're doing all right enough that I definitely worth doing more of. So if there's things that you want me to explain, Chad, especially if they could be, like, you know, explained quickly in DF, let me know. And then I will... Do my best to uh, make little independent videos about them. Ideally, if I can do them in a minute, because that's kind of the whole shtick of the series so far. Where I've just been explaining something about DF in one minute, and then just kind of putting it straight up. Keeping it simple, keeping it quick, keeping it fast. You'd like a tutorial on minecarts? So would I. <laughs> I couldn't explain minecarts in a minute. I'm also not good enough at minecarts to be able to do. So all I will simply say is, you're an ass. <laughs> I'm looking at secret things that I can't show you guys yet that aren't announced yet. You fucking donkey! The whole point of that series is for... Alright. See what they actually brought. On your bridge fort, finally? Good shit. I might actually try and do that at some point. That or I'll just build a roller coaster and not worry about actually making it functional. <laughs> like, I've made semi-functional minecart tracks, but it's a very slow, laborious task. They brought me more ducks. How nice of them. Turkeys, mule, by that goose, other duck, other duck, great. Duck, duck, goose, goose, duck, 
Not a horse. Duck. Not a boar. Uh. Perfect. It is kind of cool. Good work. It's certainly going to be a long wild ride. You know, you might actually be able to ride Mr. Bones wild ride in less amount of time than it would take you to watch the entire Punch my microphone. I'm still very curious to see what's going to happen first. Is the Steam version going to be out first, or is the series going to be done first? That's the thing that I'm the most curious to see. What's going to happen first? Is the Steam version of Dwarf Fortress going to come out of early access? Or not come out of early access. going to be released. Or am I going to finish this series first? I mean, of course, time is subjective, but like... Bet you're doing. Bored. What? Satisfied receiving water? Interested remembering a fine seat? Interested remembering being near a fine water or being nine a fine near a wonderful seat? Interested near a very fine table? Patient after being confined? Interested near a fine bed? Bored after being unable to practice craft? Bored after being unable to practice martial art? And bored after a lack of abstract thinking? What? Satisfied after receiving water? How much longer is your prison sentence? 54 more days. Oh, God. Hang in there, dwarf. See, I really want the Steam version to be out first, though. Although, if I, if I was suddenly told, oh, the Steam version will be out in eight months, I'd probably just do a bunch of marathons. Like, and or let's just say, like, they announce a release date like a month from now, and I have like, I don't know, 30 years in game to go. You bet your ass I'm just going to grind out a bunch of stuff, get her done. Gamper, what's wrong with you? Lonely after being away from family. Grouch when caught in the rain. Needs more dining tables. Old clothing. Time to make clothing. Time to do clothing. Just get uh, plants processing. Um, and then go cloth. Shirt, 50. Cloth, dress, 50. Cloth, tunic, 50. Cloth, vest, 50. Cloth, cloak, 50. Cloth, trousers, 50. 50. Cloth, glove, 50. Cloth, mitten, 50. Cloth, trousers. There's 50. I already did trousers. Cloth. Cap. 50. Cloth. Cloth. Hood. 50. Cloth. S I recently did socks. Cloth. Shoe. 50. L le leather. Uh, cap. 50. Came in on the clothing industry, which is what I needed. Yeah, and now we just wait for the clothing industry to get the heck off the ground so it can go do what it needs to do, you know what I'm saying? How are you doing, Viking Lord? How's things been? Hope you've been well. Chat, can I get a big round of beers in chat for Viking Lord? Keeping that subscription alive for a third month! Back. Yeah, Enjoy the ad free viewing and dwarfs and Probably some of the best dwarf emotes on Twitch. Like, let's be honest. Like, I think I speak for everybody involved and everybody here when I say that it's pro they're probably some of the best dwarf emotes on Twitch. We're currently fifth of sandstone. You're 106 mid autumn. We started at the very beginning of spring. You're 105. Did a little bit of renovations in this room.
Gonna do some gem windows here. There, you look pretty. Doing really good. Good to hear, man. Especially in 2020, because that's a challenge. Doing well in 2020 is like winning the goddamn. Welcome back. I did start on a five-year world. Yeah. That's why we're now at year 106. <laughs> we started on year five. We've hit year 106. When we hit year 1005, this fortress will be done. And it's going to take us a while. Also been a little bit since I posted this tweet, so I'm going to do this again. Uh, my stream team is giving away. I mean, that's I saw that post as well. I think it's an opinion, and I think it's got some truth to it, and I think it's got some uh, inaccuracy. Um... If you haven't seen it yet, if you click on that tweet, retweet that tweet, like that tweet, and follow that Twitter account. I know it's a lot of requests. It doesn't even matter if you've ever used Twitter before. Make an account for this. We're giving away a bunch of keys for, um... We're giving away a whole bunch of keys for, uh, various Worms games. Including, uh, uh Worms Ultimate Mayhem, uh, Worms Armageddon, and Worms Reloaded. Just gotta like the tweet. Retweet the tweet. Follow the Twitter. I mean, who, who doesn't want to potentially get? Arms game. Fun with friends and fun alone. I know, because I played a lot of hours of Worms alone when I was younger. Because I didn't have internet that worked. Be silly. Nothing like fallen dead Kias everywhere. The most wonderful time of the year. I'm actually so excited. So for those of you who don't know, I'm going to be streaming Worms with my team all night tonight, starting at 1 a.m. Pacific. So 1 a.m. my time starting uh we're gonna be streaming worms and uh hanging out with chat and giving away copies of worms because worms is having their 25th anniversary tonight which is like if you told let's just say 11 year old blind that he was gonna get sponsored to play worms on team 17's channel when he was playing worms armageddon and like the mid 2000s oh my god is on par with farlands or bust maybe if i was doing 10,000 years although i'm also playing a lot more than farlands or bust because farlands or bust is what like 30 minutes at a time right like it's not and it's like once a week this is like six to seven hours of stream five days a week let's go i had someone tell me it uh it, on on reddit the other day about this fort like Man, you're making Dwarf Fortress an al almost a full-time job. And I'm like, it already is. <laughs> Not really madness spirals. These dwarves are quite happy, I'll have you know. There's one mildly pissed off dwarf, and he's mildly pissed off because he wants new underpants. And you know what? We booted up the clothing industry because of that. Well, I mean, there is the completely, totally nuts, batshit, insane dwarf that's been in prison for the last five years. But that, we don't talk about. He's totally fine. And then the other dwarf who's in prison is very happy about prison. He quite likes prison, in fact. As long as we don't export socks, we'll be totally fine. But Lord Loki, it's good to see you again. Welcome back.
by the site. Like, it's kind of... I don't know. It, it, it's neat to kind of look at how far my team has come. Like, roughly a year ago, we were kind of... Not, not fumbling around, but, like, trying to figure out how to market ourselves as a crew. And now we're just, like, doing a all-night event. Taking over the Worms or Team 17's Twitch account for an evening. That's kind of really cool. Also, check out all these ducks laying duck eggs. Excellent. I'm going to forbid all them duck eggs. We're going to have little ducklings. We're going to be having duck soup before you even know it. I, I hope I have a drink. I do have a drink. Right? Duck. 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 Nope. We'll just be having boiled ducks. Eggs. No ducklings for us yet. We need a drink. Enjoy your lurks, pilot. Got that egg. Also, might as well place that Kesserite nest box. Humans gave. The humans gave us to us. Most of these dwarves are kind of busy, right? <laughs> Six hands equals 9,000 chickens. Relatively slow to get to 9,000, but you'll get there eventually. Also, thanks for the previews. I love watching the industries kick up and like they're just working on plants, processing plants constantly, running back and forth, doing all the crafting, sewing, stitching. Zapdos, I think, is like Zapdos the second is making all of our masterwork cloths now. All that. We made that artifact. Thanks for the thirty-five cents, Lord Loki. For those of you who don't know, um. Adbits appear to be working in certain regions. So, uh, if you haven't in a while, it might be worth checking to see if you have access to adbits, because all of a sudden people are getting adbits out of nowhere, and we haven't had adbits actively in like. Most, of, I think all of the bits actually on the leaderboard right now are all. Which also coincidentally means getting onto the leaderboard. Not a huge amount of bits have been changed. Monster and Samsung. Uh, apparently, uh, I, I, I've heard people were, were getting ads for birth control, which is pretty good. You know? Throw your eyeballs at the screen and give me pennies. It's great. Uh, 
I don't ever use that, st that functionality stuff. I don't have a very programming heavy mind. So I look at those if and or commands and my brain just melts out of my ear. So I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Um, I, I have no idea. That, that stuff's not something I'm capable of wrapping my head around, Viking Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Von Roland was commenting on the fact that Twitch probably should try... It, it's They're barking up the wrong tree when they're marketing female birth control at men that are interested in men. It's like, uh, good luck. But, hey, you know, ad bits is ad bits, right? Well, we've made 50 cloth, dre cloth dresses. How's, uh, Gimper the Second doing? Because Gimper the Second is the one dwarf who's kind of stressed out in the fort right now. But uh, she feels pleasure after putting on a truly splendid item. Very much is putting on clothing. Be cheering up a little bit. Should be okay. How's Petra doing? The dwarf in prison. <laughs> totally fine. Like, just a little bit bored. Like, you've been in prison for a very long time. Current mood, little bored. Aside from that, kind of indifferent. Petra is a good dwarf. Like Petra. Best dwarf. How's Picture Point doing? I put on a truly splendid item. It pleases me. Hot cup of tea. Felt satisfied at work. Satisfied improving wood burning. Shit. How's our wood burning doing? Okay. Oh, I need a I need a cook. God. Boozle. You have a new job. Go we'll figure out how to make food, please. Once you're done weaving, thread the cloth. There's so many jobs that need doing. Also, hey T, how you doing? How many dwarves do I have in this place? 51! You've never seen that way of job assigning? It's the vanilla way. The only way I use. Try playing vanilla sometime. Instead of using crutches to play the game. More of a bunker? We're a trade depot. A really, really big, wealthy trade depot. We're like the Sweden of Dwarf Fortress. We have a lot of money. And uh, I should make some silver coins. Uh, we have a lot of money. Um, and a lot of trade goods. And a big bank vault and a lot of artifacts. Not a lot of people. And everybody trades with us. We're not at war with anybody. Pretty good. Switzerland, Sweden. Actually, most of the Nordics, for that matter. Except for maybe, like, the ones that are constantly at war with Russia. History. This is the vanilla way. Assigning jobs like this? This is the vanilla way. I mean, I totally didn't blackmail the humans into bringing me free. Yeah, we're 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 the Switzerland of dwarves. More Switzerlandlands. We're not exactly like shipping furniture to everybody. Up, oh, game saving. I thought the game froze for a second. We're saving, which means it's the first of spring, which means someone might drop dead of old age. Second, the save rolls over. Certainly possible it could happen.
Also, Fog, is it fair to uh, call what you're working on Halcyon Frequency X Worms <laughs> fan art? <laughs> is, that, is that fair? Or is that not doing you enough credit? Kai? That would be like a Dragon Ball Z Kai. Man, I don't have any Dragon Ball Z sound commands. That's why. I've made it this far and we don't have any DBZ sound. Also, there's no Kia. Just a barn out. Well, nobody died of old age. Still at 50, 50 dwarves. Kind of impressive. <laughs> That's fair. Wouldn't that just be like, it's time to duel! I don't I don't really want a shit ton of weeb commands, I'm not gonna lie. I like weeb memes sometimes, but I don't really want a ton of weeb commands. I'm good. Anna is going to go attend a meeting. Yeah. I, I mean, okay, we have that one. We have that one. Also, if you cheer 90 bits, that's pretty weeb. 90 bits is pretty weeb. 91 bits is also pretty weeb. Nani, indeed. By the way, if you want those sound commands, subscribe at tier two on twitch.television slash blindrill or give me $7 a month on Patreon. That's how that works. Five sound commands just for you. Investments are open if you wish to invest your tickets, chat. This poor dwarf, why are you sleeping outside? You have fine quarters. What the hell's wrong with you, man? You know, I'll bet you you can't have meetings with your commander in chief while he's in military mode. There you go, you've had your meeting. Feel satisfied while crying on somebody in charge. Good stuff. I don't think that they can meet with the mayor if the mayor's in the military. They remove the mayor from the military. We do. Well, cheers everybody for the follows. A bunch of people have followed the channel in the last hour. And uh, I don't have a notification for it, but I do see them. Cheers, thanks. I got tired of people with less than savory usernames, if you know what I'm saying, uh, following the channel repeatedly to trigger the notification. Kind of got tired of that. But rather than, like, having to worry about that shit, just easier. Not allow any of that shit. I mean, I'm just watching this dwarf trying to attend a meeting with my mayor, and my mayor just completely ignoring him and going off and doing military shit. Like, I just read that right? Kangaroo is fighting with a Kia? No, Kangaroo is fighting with a Kangaroo. Kangaroo is dead. Kangaroo stands up. Kangaroo, kangaroo is screaming. The dwarf is punching the kangaroo. This image is a depiction of the punching of kangarooing. Murder of a kangaroo. The dwarf is picking up so much clothing. After being away from family, grouchy, after being caught in the rain. <sighs> Shamed at the lack of tables. There's plenty of tables, though, man. Oh. Um. Okay. 
Make another one of these into another dining room. I think after all of this clothing is done, we're just going to give the deal. Clothing is almost done. Means I can turn off the job cancellation. And to people who say that pigtails are not a particularly easy method of making clothes, I beg to differ. They fix tantrum spirals? You can still cause tantrum spirals if you're not careful. Have they fixed them? They're still there if that's what you're asking. Are they harder to do? Dwarves are a little bit more resilient than they were in the last version. Are they easy to manage? No, because that would remove all of the gameplay. You need to be kind of careful and watchful of the dwarves that are a little bit stressed and tend to them as they need it to happy. Literally the whole point of the game. Without that, there would quite literally be no gameplay. Yeah, I know, because I'm very distracted by something that's happening on that monitor and looking away from the mo and looking away from the microphone. I need to stay centered on the mic to when I'm talking. My own bad. Is there any advantage in separating workshops? You're new and quite confused. What do you mean by separating workshops? You mean like separating them with walls? I see some people doing that, and it always perplexes me. I don't understand. I don't understand the point. Or you dig too far. That's not how it works. So you can dig many Z's and never dig too far. With walls? I don't see the point. I've never under I just put them all in a room like this. Like these these are all my workshops, you know? We got like workshop, 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 uh we got ourselves leatherworks, our uh, metalsmiths forge, our other metalsmiths forge, the the looms, uh clother shop, you know. There, there's no real benefit to separating them. Some people claim that it helps with frame rate, and I think some people think it helps them like Organized shit, I don't see the point. At all. Also, hi, Bomb. Welcome to the stream. Did you stumble in from the YouTubes? Yeah, if you need any help or any questions, just, you know what, I can demonstrate, show you stuff. I like helping people learn DF. It's a very good game. Help people learn this game. It's a game worth learning, but it's a game that a lot of people are scared of learning. Unfortunate reason. So that's my big old stockpile over there, right? I'm a, I'm a dig a tunnel hallway thingy over this way. Yeah, if there if there's an advantage to doing that, I have never managed to figure it out. I did it once and I saw no assistance aside from that it was kind of annoying to add on more workshops. It's one of those things where I don't really know why so many people do it, but I I know that a lot of I don't know. I don't really see the point. But then again, I also build my forts kind of kind of differently than a lot of people. A lot of people comment that my forts are way too randomly laid out, nowhere near uh OCD enough for some people. My forts are very uh, flowy, I guess, in their layouts and designs versus like being very formulaic and blocky and placed together. Oh, really? You searched via Twitch? Interesting. So I um. On the topic of that, I've been uh, doing these little live tutorials on stream and then putting them up on YouTube, and they're usually about a minute and 30 seconds long. I only have three up now, but I'm slowly trying to cover stuff as people ask. And your forts are a mess? Mine kind of are too, but... You know, if you're interested in learning DF, I stream DF uh, 
about five, sometimes six days a week. Please stream for eight to ten hours a day. Although I will be taking tomorrow off because I'm doing a sponsored thing literally all night tonight. We'll play traditional roguelikes and that kind of stuff. So. All on, and over on my YouTube channel is every single one of my VOD archives. They do get... <laughs> as, as you were kind of saying, but like... If you want to follow along with brand new forts that are just getting started, there's more fort starts on that YouTube channel than probably anywhere else on YouTube. At this point, like, I've got literally years worth of DF playthroughs. Uh, of course, you know, it's just, it's direct VODs from my Twitch stream. Me sitting here and babbling, but, um, me sitting here and babbling over top of gameplay, which I know a lot of people have found helpful. I've had quite a few people at this point tell me straight up learned play, to play Dwarf Fortress just watching my videos. I also had one person tell me, which I, I think this is hilarious. I, I Someone popped into my stream two nights ago during a night stream who said that they came over from my YouTube channel and had been watching my YouTube VODs for about six weeks without realizing that it was a stream. I've just been watching my, my, my YouTube VODs thinking that I was just a very dedicated Let's Player. He's like, I was, ama I was amazed at how long your videos are. And then it occurred to me that you must be a streamer when you uh, directly addressed somebody in chat. And I'm like, how much of my stuff have you watched? Because holy fuck. How do you go? How? How do you not figure... They're called reruns. Detective skills. <laughs> I think rolled a nat zero on investigate. What happened? Like rolled the dice to investigate. The dice just shattered. Dice just noped out. Literally default. Everything's set to default, Ozzy. And um, it's only uh, five years old. So I literally paused it the second it started. And, uh, it's all world, after all. And if you want the Long Death World, you could just go get it. Like, if you want to play in the Long Death World specifically, you can just have it. It's up on my, on my, uh, no, my, my Discord. Grab your link. This is the save from 100 years. Although my one request is, if you're going to play around with Long Death, please don't stream it. Um, but feel free to do other things in the world and stream it. Like start your own alternate dimension. It's been a good time lurking at work. We'll see you later, man. Have a safe trip home. Stay healthy. Don't close some of your fucking tabs. I'll see you when I see you. Not as in-depth. Can't wait for myths and legends. Can't wait for myths and legends. Petra's out of prison. Doesn't seem to care. I mean, this is probably going to end up being like a 400 episode series on YouTube by the time all these streams. <laughs> There's going to be a lot. A bunch of random yaks. Wild yaks and cows and stuff. Weasels, all that need to be slaughtered. All that stuff showed up and just got caught in my cage traps. Tame them enough so we can slaughter them.
Also, what do you mean by Armok reveal? I kind of don't know what you mean. I think that this dwarf will be... I'm gonna practice a craft pretty bad. Let's give you bone carving, weaving, clothes making, leather working, and stone crafting. And rock pot. Do another 100 rock. I got plenty of boulders that need to get removed. Yeah, but like, how would you reveal Armwalk? I, I I guess I'm just confused by that. Would reveal a deity that the dwarves don't worship? What? <laughs> also, um, Ozzy. Because I missed that question. Do you think that short history is more enjoyable than the longer one? I don't think it matters. It depends on what kind of fort you want to do. You want to do a fort that's mostly dwarves versus people versus elves versus goblins, less undead and more big monsters? Then do a young world. Do you want to do a world that's more undead, evil, maniacal, lots of weird, twisted experiments and dark magics? Do an old world. Do you want a fort that's... Primarily, like, were creatures and vampires and zombies do a very old world. Do a medium-length world if you want to mix of both. It depends on the kind of scenario you want to play. I don't prefer either one. I think they're both good. I think that saying that one is better than the other is like saying, well, these enemies are more interesting than those enemies. It's like, no, they're both interesting. They're just different. Like, the old world that I have, the primary thing that you're going to get invaded by is a weird mix of goblins, dwarves, and zombies. In this fortress, if you get invaded by somebody, it's going to be strictly that race coming from strictly that faction. It really depends on what kind of world you want to hang out in for a while. Your fucking fire alarm went off? Are, are you like me with fire alarms where the fire alarm goes off? You stick your head out into the hallway, sniff. If you don't smell smoke, stick your head outside, look up, don't see smoke, stay in your apartment. Because <laughs> that's, that's what I... The one time there was actually a fire, somebody ran up and down the hallway screaming, There's actually a fire! And so then, then I went like, what? <laughs> Poked my head outside. And that was literally just because um, that someone did something dumb in the underground parking and uh, their tires got fired. There was a car fire in the underground parking lot. A long time ago, though. Problem. Eric Shadowblade has made a masterpiece. Good. You've posted a screenshot, slightly cut to make it easier to see. Let's see. So what portion of this fort is it? Uh, this is your current general spot, stockpile, carpenter's workshop, and tavern. Crystalline fragrances. Tavern beds and rooms, one tile big, and then the tavern wood furnace, and the tavern is white. Okay. So I'm assuming general stockpile, wood stockpile, carpenter shop, and then that's your tavern with some tavern beds. Hey, at least you give your tavern beds. This isn't messy. This is just cramped. And then, like, there's your kitchen. Guests. Here's. Like, you, your, your floors are in dire need of paving. Like, this is much more like the... What's the word I'm looking for here? The vanilla uh, BF forts that they, that they build in AI. That, they, that the AI create. World gen. That's what that looks like. Also... The annual 
tribute from Busty to is the first of granite near 107. Still have 81 door. I don't actually think that paved floors affect anything, do they? I know that engraved floors can affect things. You can understand that picture? Isn't it like this? I see the fucking matrix. It's some something that I that I try and insist to people, right? It's like this right here is vanilla, right? Once you stare at vanilla or any tile set for DF for a while, vanilla just starts to look like DF. It doesn't really matter. Like, it just starts to look like DF after a bit. Once you've just kind of eyeballed it for long enough, your brain just kind of like replaces the tiles in your head. And you're like, ah, yes, I'm looking at Dwarf Fortress. Oh, look. Beautiful. Doesn't matter if you're using Space Fox. It doesn't matter if you're using, um, you know, a tile set like mine. It doesn't matter if you're using F's tile set, any tile set. Heck, even probably that new Steam style set. Once you're kind of used to looking at Dwarf Fortress and the way things move, everything just starts to look like Dwarf Fortress after a while. Like, to me, like, when people ask me, they're like, well, do you prefer this type of tile set? It's like, no, I use this type of tile set because it's a lot more approachable to somebody who doesn't know what they're looking at. Um, I don't use it because it's necessarily easier. It's just people think it's... It's like this weird placebo effect. That they're like, oh, they, those are pictures. Okay, I can understand this. Instead of, like, taking the extra hour or, or however long it takes to kind of start to comprehend vanilla. Although one of the funniest things I had was back when I first started really streaming a whole lot of Dwarf Fortress from other games, Kibbs and Britches came into my stream once and just said blind, I've had this eureka moment. And I'm like, excuse me? He's like, I see dwarves. <laughs> it was like three weeks into me streaming Dwarf Fortress. Night. They brought us a donkey leather bag, copper cage with a cat in it. How much that cat was how? Ew. The human that was sleeping in the room, his name is Durpal Moral Myth, is a monster slayer who thought, who I thought would die when the troglodyte slashed his neck, but didn't. Does he just have a big scar on his neck now? All right. Um, I need to release that cat from the cage. Just put the cat in there, and then I'll release it from there. Rather than actually placing it. Assuming he can talk, I wonder if he's mute. I've certainly encountered mute characters before. Like, if you get your tongue cut out. I should make this uh, cat available as a pet. Or rather, never mind, cats are always uninterested. See what this cat does. Immediately follows this dwarf. Who's this dwarf? Dinsky. You like cat. Watch what this cat does for a little bit. Because we haven't had any cats in the fort for a while. They all kind of died of old age. I gelded them all. Really likes Padinsky. That. All in good Padinsky. Isn't that cute? Cats are adorable. They're all mute, so he could never petition. Here's the thing. If they're part of a performance troop, trumpet, the performance troop leader can um, petition for citizenship for the whole group. And that's how I got a plump helmet and citizen, is the whole crew uh, petitioned to stay in the fortress, and then they all petitioned again as a crew to join as but yeah I, I saw that post plump helmet people are cool any game that lets me play as a mushroom is a good video game in my opinion which is why that little game that I was playing last night um, realm of the ghost king was kind of neat 
Pro video will probably go up on YouTube tomorrow of that. Uh, no, because Toad is not really a mushroom person. Toad is a toad. Toad is his own thing. I, I mean, I, I more like the... How about this? I like the grim, dark fantasy concept of mushroom people. Not a huge fan of Mario's happy-go-lucky mushroom people. Does that make sense? Elven Caravan has arrived, and I will not forget to trade with them this year. Damn it. <laughs> I hope that they bring me a unicorn. Bring me a unicorn. The problem is I can't sell them anything. I have to sell them like almost exclusively meals and food because they never they don't have enough strength to carry the stuff that I want to trade them. Kind of frustrating actually. How did I make peace with goblins? I didn't. I uh, just don't have enough dwarves in my fort that the goblins deem me a threat, thus they don't invade me. I would need uh, 80 dwarves for, my, for the goblins to consider me a threat and care about invading me. Because they uh, don't consider me a threat, they don't care about invading me. How many Z-levels down does the pit go? The pit is 10 Z-levels deep. The whole fortress it goes down to minus 60. I'm listening to a poem and one is reciting. Kind of cool. All right, dwarf, go trade. Go trade. Okay, I don't know who you're trying to conduct a meeting with. I'll make you three socks. Um, and I'm gonna give the brokers. Job. Eric, you've just gotten a uh. New job. You're you're now my head of trading. My broker. Eric, who is actually a very depressed dwarf. Still is kind of not the happiest dwarf. Not a uh, set dwarf by any stretch. Why is that? Viking Lord. But no, we're actually at war with goblins. If you go to my faction, um, the Joyous Devil is a goblin civilization that we are at war with, technically. But they don't invade me because they don't know I'm here because I don't have enough dwarves for them to know. Kind of by design, because I don't really want to go to war if I don't. Please have brought me unicorns. These have brought me unicorns. These have brought me unicorns. These have brought me unicorns. Brought me unicorns. I don't think they didn't bring. They brought me a yak. No. Of course I do. Most of my uh, dwarves are in the military. I have uh, two full squads of fully kitted out, geared up spear masters. No, I'm sorry. One squad of fully kitted out, geared up spear masters, and then two squads of fully kitted out, uh, double shielded wrestlers, which are almost as horrifying. Um, so.
properly layering and stacking armor. You want to know what's interesting is they just do it themselves. You really don't need to min-max any of that shit. They will automatically go for the highest quality, best material armor. You can completely ignore it, and you'll end up with generally mostly kitted out perfect wool. Occasionally, like, you can go in and check and then be like, oh, you don't have a breastplate. Okay. Either make another breastplate, and they'll probably go put it on because a new one will be made, and it'll trigger, and they'll be like, I don't have a breastplate. I need a breastplate. They'll go get a breastplate. Or you can manually go into the military screen and manually assign them a breastplate. But don't because you don't need to. And people who think that you need to are wrong. <laughs> you really don't. Like with the shield thing, I just told them to equip two shields. There's nothing fancy about that. Go into shield, select shield, select any, uh, and then shield, select any. Just, just give them two. Yeah. I Actually, technically, you can make dwarves wield three shields. They'll put one on their back, and they'll have one in each hand. And shields are actually very effective for, like, stabbing people's heads in, which is actually one of the reasons why spider people, adventurers, are stupidly overpowered, because you can have, uh, well, spiders have a lot of legs, means a spider person has a lot of extra arms, which means you can have a lot of extra shields, which means you can block a lot of. And you could literally just go down into turtle shell mode by yourself and just be like, ah! Kind of an amazing visual <laughs> if you think about it. <laughs> One person phalanx, yes. Uh, because shields are weirdly effective weapons. And uh, the main problem with wrestlers is they just get shot from a distance because they don't carry shields. But if you make them equip two shields, they can be the most skilled dwarven fighters, wrestlers. They can become elite wrestlers and be very effective at literally never taking damage and just, like, throwing things around. Very effective at taking out uh, lighter-armed enemies with less strong weapons. Elves. And also, unlike swords dwarves, uh, they will simply bludgeon the enemies to death, which means you don't have to worry about, like, when, when you have a bunch of swords dwarves, right? They'll run into the enemies, and the enemies will fly into a billion pieces, which looks beautiful as you watch all the little bits fly everywhere and everything sails off in arcs and blood goes everywhere. It's but then you realize, fuck, I need to clean up eight goblins each instead of one goblin each because each goblin is now in nine, eight, twelve pieces, right? And every single tooth individually, and no dwarves can't carry more than one tooth at once, which is a problem. Now, if they bludgeon them to death with shields or hammers, they just kind of <laughs> dead, and maybe teeth will go everywhere, but that's fine. They'll just kind of go <laughs> dead, and then they just need to pick up the body and throw the body into the lava or into the, the garbage disposal or whatever the heck you're using to get rid of your corpses. They just need to dispose of the body now. They don't need to dispose of the body the head, the torso, the two legs, the arms, the hands, and 15 fingers. So corpse cleanup goes quicker, so the dwarves don't get as scarred. Unless, you know, you're just dumping magma on the corpses, then fucking have a field day. Chop them into 10,000 pieces while you fucking... He charges people and stomps them? Just like doggy pile people, it's great. <laughs> Just run up to them and be like, everybody do the flop! Boom! And watch them as they go splat. In there. Satisfied while yelling at me. Word after being able to practice some martial arts. Alrighty, Gimper. I'm, I'm gonna do the thing. You're in the bear fighters. Bear Fighters 2. Bear Fighters 2 can go train. From both shields? I mean, sounds like something that any respectable DM would do. Also, it kind of has nothing to do with anything aside from the fact that I've streamed this game a few times, but... um. Yeah, you, you know Brigador? Somebody audited Brigador to be an RTS. A simple one, but a functional RTS. 
is kind of awesome. Reg, what's up? It's good to see you, man. How you been? Is your armor costs more because your race, which is a Loxodon, is an elephant person? Oh, so you have heavier armor? Because there's more metal in it? I could see that. I could see the logic there. There you go. Feels pleasure remembering putting on a good item. Feels satisfied learning about biting. Bloody well better. They're expensive classes. Plants the shields into the ground and then charges. Does he ever scream Hulk smash? And have you ever grabbed an elf by the hair and whipped them around and then screamed puny god? Or am I just being silly? I mean, I'm assuming you're not green. <laughs> Dude, this is yeah. Leave it. Leave it. All right, so that's about two and a half years of time spent in long death today. We've been streaming about five and a half hours of doors. A little less than that, about five hours and 20 minutes of doors. I think it's uh, it's it's time for me to uh, call it on DF for the day. Um, but like I said, we're not quite done yet. We're still going to go for a little bit longer. But... Um, it's been a good session of Long Death, I think. We we uh, did some uh, renovations in the basement. We added on to the maze. We have enough dwarves now that we could get attacked by giants, cyclopses, and land titans.